met the Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019, Transportation Committee of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners come to order. Um, as is our, our custom here in our practice, um, we will, this, this meeting is actually being filmed, so for the citizens that are watching this, welcome. Uh, we've got a pretty full agenda. I'm going to start by going around the room and, and introducing myself. My name is Kelly Robson, Vice Chairman, but also Chairman of this committee, which is Transportation. We'll go around and we'll end with Madam Chair. So, uh, Mark Teal, County Administrator. Jessica Theriot, Assistant to Mark Teal. Bill Peacock, Purchasing Director. Jeff Valentin, Transportation Director. Jamal Shepard, Commercial Director. Jamal Shepard, Connect Douglas, Transit Coordinator. Jamal Shepard, Transit Coordinator. Jerry Watson, Transit Services Division Manager. Janet Willis, Compliance Officer with Connect Douglas. Michael Hatton with the Collaborative Firm. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and the Vice Chairman of this committee. Thank you all for being here. And so we've got a pretty full agenda in this. Um, our meeting in transportation is facilitated by our Director of Transportation. So Miguel Valentin, you're up. We've got a pretty tight agenda, so we're going to try to push through this as tight as we can. Yes, sir. Thank you. We have the first order of business. Business would be to adopt the uh, minutes of the meeting of June 9th, 18th, 2019. Okay. Um, hopefully everyone has had a chance to take a look at this. Has this been um, submitted to everybody as far as committee voting members? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. If everybody has had a chance, um, can I get a motion to adopt the meetings after the meeting? So second. 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 I got a motion to second. Anybody want to talk about this? Any edits, amendments? If not, I'd like to have a, um, all who agree to adopt as is. Raise your right hand. Say aye. Aye. Anybody vote? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, Miguel. It's been adopted. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chairman. The second item uh, on the agenda is a, a series of updates from our transit services uh, division, starting with uh, the, the public engagement component. And I'll let uh, Gary introduce the next item. And I'm going to immediately yield the floor to Michael Hightower and the Calabria firm who's going to give us our report today. Okay. okay. I mean, uh, good evening. And uh, Daniel, of course, she's uh, 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 out of town this week. She was taking a break with her daughter, so I told her I could pinch in for her today. So uh, she said hello. Uh, I'll be very brief. Gary told me to be brief, Mr. Chair Miguel, so I'm, I follow orders pretty good. Uh, I've cut the document in half, so it, uh, a lot of the stuff that we uh, that that has happened prior to the uh, launch, of course, you're aware of. We'll put that in a more comprehensive report. What you have before you is a very concise document that highlights uh, a lot of the post-launch activities. Uh, the chapter here, news and views, uh, the Connect Douglas uh, uh, route bus posters, which was developed to, to both public and private, uh, a lot of the private businesses, and also the uh, the Douglas County uh, uh, Transportation Center exterior signage. Uh, those that have, have, have uh, own work and some have been completed. On page three, again, post-launch, uh, uh, well, uh, we have been, uh, uh, we as in the firm and uh, uh, Danielle and uh, Dr. DJ and others with the firm have been working uh, hard to make sure we get the word out with the schedules and activities. And obviously, uh, some of the ones that we have uh, uh, done also include uh, media, social media, or weekly postings. Uh, FISP uh, with the fixed route bus operations. Uh, we've also advertised heavily the free fare rides, ridership, route for the set to, to, to Six Flags. Bus stop signage has been obviously a thing that we've been working with Gary on. And the schedule was critical that we get the information and the get on board sessions. On page four, again, more post lunch uh, events. Uh, 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 I had a chance to also pop into the winds to wind down. Uh, we had a table there. I had a good time, man. I didn't dance too much, but I almost danced. I don't want to. I want to hurt nobody. Uh, and also, obviously, uh, uh, we've continued to uh, yell and Gary to, to to work at the transportation center. Page page five. Uh, this is a great uh, uh, example of the amount of uh, outreach we've done to the variety of this place uh, throughout the uh, area. I don't want to read page five. You can read it for yourself, but as you can tell, it covers a a, a myriad of. Uh, of sites in the county that we've covered, um, and we'll continue to cover. So we've been very active to make sure we get the red eye regarding uh, uh, post launch advertisements and events. And and again, page six just summarizes a variety of things that we've done as it relates to uh, 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 events, uh, services, and um, looking at uh, uh, some focus groups uh, facilitation. 
Uh, I mentioned uh, one of the things that the chairman and Gary asked us to do, and we we meet with Gary later, is to do a post-March 90-day uh, review. And uh, one of the things we did uh, on purpose is to have someone who's worked with us before, but not too close to us, to kind of help us look at that. She'd be working with myself and Danielle. Uh, Dr. De Deborah Blake Johnson, she is uh, a Douglas County resident. You've seen her face around. And, uh, and she's, uh, she lives here, and uh, she's a uh, management consultant. I've known her for about five years now on another project, working with Mormon University. So if she lives here. She's worked on almost every, at least 65% of the events with the Connect Douglas she's helped out with. So she's a Douglas kind of see her face. Uh, she and I will meet with Gary to kind of look at uh, things that the post uh, measurement tools. And give me just a two minutes about your background, do you mind? Sure, no, I don't mind. I'm an educator by trade. Um, I worked for Atlanta Technical College for 13 years in an administrative position, several of them. My last position there was the Director of Continuing Education. So that was about personal and professional development, offering trainings for the community and the staff. Um, I'm also an online professor. Um, and I serve on several dissertation committees, so that keeps me busy as well. Then I have my own business called The Writing Pad. Um, I do a lot of document editing, as well as trainings, working with people such as Mr. Hightower on special projects. And so I keep myself pretty busy and productive, but I'm happy to be a member of this team. And she lives here in Douglas County. And Douglas I live County. here in Douglas County. Yeah, no. Oh, no. I know. Okay. We know each And part of the reason, Madam, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair, and Gary, is you know, is so she can kind of look at me and Danielle to say, how have we done? And how, how have things gone as they should? So we wanted that review. So that's why we get her involved, just like an internal check and balance. So questions, comments, I've been, that was six minutes, so I'm a minute over. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Burke, for, for, for joining us a little bit more. Pleasure. Um, yeah, I do. And I'm going to, again, I know we've got to keep this very, very tight. Um, uh, Michael Hightower, th thank you for that overview. Um, um, we have launched um, Connect Douglas, and um, we'll get to sort of the feedback of that in a minute as far as ridership, etc. But public engagement was something that was very important to us um, as well as to not only leading up to the launch, but also post-launch. Um, these next 90 days are very, very critical. And while we, we do have a lot of activities that are going on that are still doing education, I think you hit on the head just, just in your comments, which is we, we need credentialed feedback. But I'm saying that in such a way, uh, and I appreciate the doctor being here, and I'm sure you appreciate this when you talk about thesis, dissertations, and stuff. I want to know real feedback. How well are we doing on this? How, I mean, how, are we really getting to the citizens that actually the end users, to actually people who benefit from this system, and what are they thinking? And I, I'm, I'm hopeful that this next 90 days will give us some very, very rich feedback, not just quantitative, which you need to know the number of riders and all of that. But I want to know, okay, but what, what is your experience? And, and you, Madam Chair, can appreciate that when you have town halls and as many as I've had over time, and you really get before the citizens and you hear their heart. It gives you a much different perspective that, okay, we had 102 people come. It's not like getting in the room. And you mentioned focus groups. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to belabor this uh, because, again, this was just supposed to be the highlight of recognizing you, Gary. Over the next 90 days, we need to have, um, get this feedback. But we, we really need to hear from the, 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 not the observers, the users. And those people who are trying to engage with this and still trying to figure out, well, how do I get involved with this system? Because it's not as intuitive. People are still trying to learn the routes and trying to measure how close I am to that route to even engage it. So I'm putting this out in the atmosphere, not to solve it now, not to design it now. But these next 90 days are critical because they also drive adjustments. In other words, um, should we adjust routes? Um, should we change stops? Should we change schedules and all of that is, is all about getting better getting better so the feedback is important i'm going to stop with my comments with that um, does anybody else want to add to this right now because this is just supposed to be an update i'm sure i want to give you a first shot though Any thoughts? I, I believe that uh, what you're saying that qualitative and not only the quantitative but the qualitative uh, component is very critical at this point because it allows you to touch and feel the, the the clients who are who's writing that piece is very, very, it's, it's a little tougher than just your numbers because mm -hmm. you got to get in there. It's easy to just count, but you got to get in there. And, uh, it's based on perceptions. So uh, glad that Dr. E.J. is with us. And uh, so we'll be a good measure. Yeah. 
And I, I'll just add that, that part of this evaluation, which I totally agree with everybody, is, is, is crucial. But a big part of that evaluation will be onboard surveys, mm -hmm. where we actually have someone on the buses to talk to the people mm -hmm. who are riding. And that's the quality of the piece. Yeah. Yes, that'll be great. All right, so, so to that point, as a deliverable, like what can we expect as a committee, and especially ultimately the board of commissioners who wants to see, uh, and, 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 and rightfully so, um, how we're doing. Um, and so in 90 days, will we get some type of readout, like what these onboard surveys, like set the future for me, like a moment in time, you'll get what? What is the, what is that? When we talk about evidence base, when we talk about outcomes, when we talk about deliverables, would, would frame something. Okay. Frame up what we have talked about, what Danielle and I talked about along with uh, our other staff internally, was first make sure that we have, uh, with Gary, met all the CMAC grant requirements. Uh, are there, were there any federal grant requirements to make sure that we stay compliant? Uh, right. So uh, that's, that's to keep things clean and check, 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 check. I think number two, uh, you hit the nail on the head, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Chairman, and that is client services, client touching. Uh, thirdly, uh, working with Gary and Miguel and others here, looking at the routing, it, 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 you know, is it user friendly? Uh, do we need to adjust routes? Do we not? And I think we need to tie into the service delivery persons here because I, I, I think it's, it's more than just, I was just also looking at these guys who live it every day. So I think uh, maybe asking them some internal questions with Gary's permission about what things, what, what tweaks do we need to make? What have we heard? And I think being able to have a quantifiable document that talks about policy, uh, quantifiable uh, information from clients, and also an internal uh, piece from Gary and his staff about things, what were their goals, did we meet them, did we not? So I think that's why I thought the DGS is here to kind of keep all of us as a check and balance. All right. So then let, me, let me bring this to close, let me just maybe frame this. So uh, uh, Gary, uh, next 90 days you'll come up with sort of this feedback, whatever that is, right? There's some output, whether it's CMAC or um, you know, funding related or um, user related. And then out of that, um, that information will be presented perhaps to the Board of Commissioners as a, as a whole with the expectation of whatever adjustments will be done by the end of the year. So I'm saying that last month was June, that basically did, we're into the six month, we launched in June, so there's the six month feedback period, right? Three months to figure out what we do, and then another 90 days to figure out um, how do we respond to that. Do you, do you, do you agree with that time frame? Yes, that sounds about right. Okay. And we, we have Pam as chairman come back here if you, if, if, if you guys don't mind uh, an update in August as well, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind the update as far as just general, but I'm saying as far as action items oh, are concerned. Because it's going to be in the aggregate question. the data and aggregate some for us to respond yes. to. Yes, yes. Okay. Gary, are we clear on that? Yes, sir. All right. Um, are we going to talk about um, the bus? Is that all mm -hmm. yeah. in detail? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and speak this. All right. Yeah. Yes, I'm um, I'm passing out uh, daily ridership okay. from the day that we launched yep. on June the twentieth yep. up through through yesterday. Uh, the the ridership on Route forty the connector route from Dugsville to Lithia Springs to uh, Cobb Link to Six Flags has been really strong. In fact, that it surprised me how strong it's been. Uh, route 20 and Route 10 are holding their own pretty well. Uh, route 30, the Thornton Road Riverside route is, is lagging for some reason. Uh, we felt like we would have stronger ridership in those warehouse and distribution centers down there, but that hasn't been the case so far. Uh, but overall, pleased with, pleased with the ridership. Uh, we've had a few uh, little issues that we had to deal with uh, transitions about, uh, specifically the, uh, the on-time schedule and the missing people at stops who were getting, wanting to get on the buses. But, uh, we believe that we've ironed most of those out. Uh, in fact, for the last couple of days, we, we haven't had any complaints to come into the office. So yeah, we yeah. believe like we're, we're starting to get a, uh, a handle mm -hmm. uh, on everything. Uh, no mechanical issues with the buses. They're, they're running mm -hmm. properly. Uh, we're getting comments from people uh, who are seeing the buses out running their routes. And, and of course, to me, 
uh, word of mouth and, and visually seeing something uh, is the best advertising that, that you can have. So uh, all in all, uh, good launch. We're continuing to work every day. We're trying to get the word out to, uh, to the public, trying to educate them on, on how to, to use the, uh, the bus service. And um, when we do have an issue or a complaint to come in, we address it immediately. And Jamal's done a really good job of providing feedback to the, to the clients who have called us with uh, a problem. Jamal. Yes, I have a question for you. So, um, what, what are you seeing now? Your first initial response, um, what are you hearing from the citizens when they call you? Give us a framework of sort of the, the categories that you're hearing. Yes, sir. Well, basically, there's been main two categories. Um, again, like I said, was them not knowing how to properly read the schedule, um, the bus not being there when they expected to, or the bus not showing up more, or leaving them at the stop. So the key thing that we were working with transitions and trying to educate the public is about adhering to the schedule and knowing where our physical bus stops are. Yes, sir. So that was one key important thing that we did to get up and get all the bus stops out so the drivers know to be looking for patrons at these bus stops as they're going along their route. And uh, when a passenger calls in or a patron calls in uh, stating that you know they've missed a the bus, we find trying to figure out where they were standing or where they were at and try to let them know what the bus stops look like and be at the bus stop at the proper time. So that seems to be working with them and you know, they're, they're making those connections. This may be a little far fetched, but have we ever thought about a tutorial for the schedules? They are a little, you know, I've sat there and tried to comprehend and understand the schedule a little bit. So, do you have a tutorial out there so they can understand something? Maybe just like a little YouTube, not a YouTube, anything that's a tutorial. We, we don't at this time, but that's a great idea. Yeah. Something we could do. Right. Yeah. Because we didn't, because yeah. basically what we base it off of is the way I know from Martin's schedule and also um, Cobb Link's schedule. Uh, you read it just like you, know, you read from left to right, but you're right and left and put something out there for them so they know to follow a trip straight across mm -hmm. all the way to its, from its origin to its destination. Because you've so. got to remember a lot of citizens never use the trip system. Correct. Mm -hmm. so 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 my daughter looked at it, you know, she's never ridden the bus and she's just totally, I said, give it to my back. Yes, ma'am. So if you could just. Yes, ma'am. If that's. Yes. You, you no, I, 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 think, I, I think that's important, and, and that goes hand in hand with, okay, first I can't read it, I mean, not, not me personally, but you, you can't read it, because it, it, then um, when I go out there, it, 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 it's nothing like that experience where you miss the bus. Right? That, that, it, it had, I mean, when, I, when you tell me that it's going to be out there at 220, it's got to be out there, you know, I, it, it can't be ahead of me, it, it, you, know, you, you, you can't leave me. Um, it's nothing like that. I mean, I'm all, you know, people are okay with sort of being a little late. You know, it's, it's coming, it's coming. But it's another that, that says that I, 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 I was left. Um, and so I think those go hand in hand. So that, that, that first experience, giving them assurance that the system is going to work with me, not punish me, not, not cause me to miss wherever I'm going. I think that's so important. So I think that is right. And, and, and to make the doctor's point, um, but we, it, it's about education. We, we, we've got to hold their hand, and it's a fundamental where I think we think you guys have a very advanced society, advanced way of thinking about, well, this is a system, but there are people who are not quite used to this. It's not as intuitive as you think. Um, <laughs> um, but again, I, I, I know that more than anything, the schedule has to be on point. So here's my question was, the master schedule, is it online, or is it that paper copy that, that spoke not there from two months ago? Is it's that online. The, all right, so on it's the online. Page. All right, so, so online is the master schedule. But you've got a bunch of schedules out there, and I'm looking at my paper schedule. And other people are looking at paper schedules that you have given out at the Transportation Services Center, et cetera. Now, I won't belabor this, but what's the master record? Because if you've adjusted up online, and you haven't replicated those paper copies, we're perpetuating the, the law. No, uh, they're, 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 the, they're the same. Okay, so they are the same. Yes, sir. And I also want to answer to you. Please, please, please respond. We, we do have both. We have the paper copy and online version. Yeah. And both are in sequence. So they are, they are. So you make sure that the contractor, you guys know where I'm going. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Yes, sir. The contractor will align with whatever is published. In other words, mm -hmm. okay. Miguel, you get where I'm going? Yes, sir. I, I just want to hear that publicly, that that. that Whatever we put out there, whether it's online or paper, they're the same thing. 
And if you ever make changes to the online, the paper has to be as well. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Yep. In other words, any other comments? Mark, you? Mm, I'm good. I pulled it up. Okay. It's all I'm saying. You know, mm -hmm. which, you know, how to read it from left to right. Those little yeah, things. Yes, so they can pick it up. I'll just add to that, to the discussion that in, in the future, we're going to have a potentially an app where on your cell phone you can pull up the schedule. So we'll have to be able to make sure that they're synchronized. If there's any changes in the schedule, all of the elements, all of the media has to be updated. Um, again, advanced society, uh, you know, um, the, the apps, you know, um, I think all of them need to be lined because everybody will use a tool based on where they are, right? Some people may not use it like they used to pay for, right? Some people will use the app, the Uber type version, the subware are we at, you know, GPS, et cetera. We just need to make sure that all the platforms match the needs of the people, if that makes sense. So I, I, I don't discount that, but this does not, does not put so much emphasis on one versus the other. How about all of them? Make sure all of them are linked Absolutely. Up. Okay, all right, that's good. Come on, McGill. It's on you. So, okay, anything else on this topic? Um, that, I mean, okay, so listen, one thing, ridership. And okay, we talked about Route 30. Is that the one, Riverside? Okay. Mm -hmm. Route 30. Now, that's primarily commercial, unlike the other ones, which are residential, where people are, who are actually using it, are coming out of their businesses. I mean, it's going to be coming out of their homes, get on um, something to take me somewhere, live, work, or, you know, play, work, whatever. The, the 30 route is primarily commercial residence, right? So people are not coming out of their commercial residence. To get, you, you get what I'm saying? So you almost get, these are two different clientels. The volume should, should not match. You, you got to look at it from a commercial perspective as opposed to a residential, if that makes sense. In other words, you're not coming out of that system. You're not coming out of all those buildings, like houses that you pass through on the other routes uh, along the way, per se. Um, that's more of a destiny as opposed to uh, an origination point, right? I mean, think about it. It's just, it's all commercial. For, for no, let's not say all commercial. It's a commercial route, right? It's a business district. So um, it, is it the proper perspective that, or is it about right for being a business district as opposed to the other routes which are highly residential origination? I mean, I'm open to comments well, my, on that. My response to that is that's when we were evaluating the system and, and trying to prepare what routes we were going to, to utilize is the feedback we were getting from that Fort and Road Riverside area is that they had jobs available but they couldn't get people to the jobs. Okay. And so that was the main purpose of, of that route is, is to open up those jobs to people uh, in the Douglas or proper area and also people uh, coming into Douglas County from, from Fulton Cobb and, and elsewhere to get to those jobs on the Fort Hill Riverside. That was totally the main purpose of it, Route 30. All right, so the jobs are open. Let's say, so the bus is live, but the bus doesn't drive when the job openings are there, right? The job openings, we have a job opening tomorrow. Well, you've got to go through the process of 36 days, whatever the process may be. So think about the process that you may have to go through. The jobs are just now, the system is just available. And the jobs that people were wanting to, to people to fill, they come and go, right? So it, 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 it's, it, it's not like, once I get the job and now I can go daily, I'm, I'm thinking this is gonna build over time, not the immediacy. Because again, the jobs may have closed by now. And they're gonna come open and close, open and close, open and close, right? Um, and the people who actually need this, it, it becomes a, it, it's tiny. I'm thinking it builds over time as opposed to, I'm just looking for some thought, am I looking at this the right way? Because you, you're right, if I'm commercially, uh, and Jamal, you, we, we had this, we were at the Hilton, um, and yes, um, they want people to come work um, uh, for them. And some people who have, or what they would say, a, 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 a stable transportation. Well, how do we handle that situation where, well, the job is here, we now have transportation for you, it may not be aligned. What, what are your thoughts on that, Jamal? Well, I think the key thing is finding out where are they coming from. Um, Mr. Gear and I have talked, Mr. McGill and I have talked, even with Route 30, with the low numbers um, on that particular route. 
when we decide to do our schedule or route enhancement, yep. you know, we extend that route from tributary on out to Fabry Road. Yep. Uh, and take a right and come back up to the transportation center. And then along that route or that corridor, you can pick up more people or service more people that may be in that area. Or once you get to the transportation center, the bus will pick up from there if they're making that commute from that location to get back to the tributary and the uh, Riverside Road area. A loop. Yes, sir. You can that as a loop. I get it. I, I, I never thought about it that way, but yes, I, I got it. There was some suggestions mm -hmm. by economic development to take it up to, um, up through Anawake and stuff. But I'll, I'll let y'all decide that um, yes, as far as where the real need is. Um, uh, as opposed to bring maybe the 40, as opposed to getting on the highway. Taking it down to the road and cut up because um, if we don't work that out, it's not designed it now. Um, these are all thoughts. But anyway, um, to your points, let's just keep monitoring it and um, let's just let the numbers prove out the evidence and we'll adjust accordingly. Um, let's make sure that our commercial district does still, again, uh, I want to just emphasize for the record that we'll continue to make sure that they got the message. Um, um, I know we've done lunch and learns and so forth, but did they get the messages to the people that now they have a stable opportunity to get to work, but also um, continue to enhance because think about it. The people that you targeted, which were um, on the north side, uh, again, it depends on uh, maybe they are looking at the jobs, maybe they are getting involved. The question is, does the population match the job opportunities? Right? You got to help out there. Yes, you got good job. Miguel, we got to keep going. I'm sorry, this is good no, conversation. No, but can we keep moving? Yeah, I, th I think we came around to. to uh, Essentially, the fact that there's going to be a learning curve on the utilization of this media. Yes. Uh, we we are tracking where things are headed with numbers and all like that, but uh, we are not going to be overly reactive and make changes. Mm -hmm. We're, right. We need to allow the system to, to settle right. in and get people to learn the routes and what have you. So there's an education component, right. and uh, we are tracking the numbers, and then we'll make decisions uh, based on the longer term. So we agree that in 90 days, we'll get some of that first initial feedback that we talk to users, and then by the end of the year, perhaps that'll be the first chance that we'll make true system adjustments. Is that agreed? Yes, yes sir. And in the interim, <coughs> Every other week, every week, or at least every other week, I'm providing the commissioners with a, a report. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, mm -hmm. um, you, you provide however you choose to provide the full commissioners, but we'll have a monthly uh, report as a standing monthly report on um, public engagement. Mm -hmm. We'll make that stand. Okay. Just you get all that. Yes, sir. I know that was a lot, but that that was a key moment right there. Okay, Miguel. Right. Let's go. Uh, next item on the agenda is another transit services. Um, element, uh, the Transportation Center building addition. Uh, that item was, uh, as you know, before the board, and there was some discussion about what it was initially bid. Uh, the recommendation by the board was that it be rebid. We have done that, and uh, we have the results of uh, that exercise, and uh, between Mr. Peacock and Gary, we'll cover that. <coughs> All right. And I'll yield the floor to Mr. Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did rebid the project. We received uh, six, sorry, five bids back in. They range from $1,037,000 all the way up to $1,624,000. <clears throat> uh, Janet was kind enough to do a real deep dive into the proposals. Uh, and uh, based on her review, uh, we found that several were non-compliant in the information they provided. Um, so, uh, Janet, would you just were you willing to just go through your notes on uh, or Gary, go through that discussion uh, that we sure, had the other no day? Problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. go. Is there okay. a handout that I'm missing that y'all about to walk us through to see it, or just just gonna be verbal? And, and this is just something that um, I did when I came when I finished the review. Um, there's a couple more okay. All right, here we go. The the low bidder was appeared to be benchmarked. The problem is they didn't meet the DBE goal. They had a they had a uh, they completed the paperwork, but the person that they had to fill in the DBE paperwork was not certified in the area of the work that they proposed to do. 
So therefore, you can't count any of that participation uh, towards the DBE go. When that DBE also is an employee of Benchmark that they were trying to set up as a uh, as a uh, sub. So. And, and I do want to point out that during the pre uh, pre bid meeting, yeah. that was something that we specifically said to make sure that. If you use a DBE, they're certified in the area in which you uh, propose to use them. Uh, at Diversified uh, had the next low bid. They fell short of the, goal, of the goal, just slightly short. But the problem is if you fall short, then you have to show good faith effort for the remaining amount, and they didn't show any good faith effort. They also didn't submit their federal certification paperwork back. The FTA required federal certification paperwork. The, uh, the prohibition against lobbying, and uh, I think it was a debarment and suspension. They didn't submit any of, any of that back. Um, the next one, of course, was Hadley, and, and they did meet the goal at 10.21%, and they submitted their federal certification paperwork. Uh, the other two, there were some issues with the other two, plus they were extremely high. So based on that review and the discussion that was held between uh, Miguel and Gary and Janet and I, uh, we are going to recommend to this committee that the award of this contract be made to Headley. Okay. All right. Any discussion? Before I call on uh, a motion to, to, to um, make a recommendation to the full board, we need to get moving on this. And so I think we, um, we've done our proper vetting. We, we, we've gone back. I want to acknowledge everybody's efforts on this to keep it, make it a clean process, to enhance the process. We've done so. Um, but now, I think it's time that we have to move forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Any more thoughts? All right. I'd like to um, call for a motion to accept the recommendation from the due diligence team to um, present to the full board commission heavily as the. Uh, uh, Sorry. You want to say something? Before yeah. Well, no, I was relying. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? What, what I was going to say was that, that the amount of bid was uh, $1,364,000. And so I was going to frame my motion based on that. We'll reframe it. That's fine. Is that, is that within the uh, yeah. Yes, that's under budget. Yeah. So we got a motion. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. 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 To make a recommendation to the full board of commissioner uh, for Headley. In the amount of what? I want to clarify. One million three hundred and sixty-four thousand. With, with the clarified motion, does the second agree with that clarified motion? Mm -hmm. I don't okay. Get okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's go ahead. We got a motion and a second. All in favor of making this recommendation to the full board commissioners as um, clarified. Raise your right hand. Say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to this? Motion carried. Bill, thank you. Again, everybody, yes, Bill, Gary, I know. Miguel, appreciate it. Thank you. Went on. So, quick question. Yes. Somebody? Yes. So, this was also discussed extensively in the purchasing oversight committee. Do we, we need to take it to the purchasing oversight committee for discussion? Purchasing oversight. Well, in theory, the purchasing oversight was to ensure that the process was clean and tight and adherent to the new. Okay. Rules. At this point, it's gone through that process. Now you're over here. We're we're just saying, okay. Okay. It's clean. All right. We're good. We're good. The amount. Time to go. And I'm sure I'm going to pause. You got any comments on that? Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is another transit services uh, item. Uh, the Atlanta Regional Commission has opened, I'm sorry, not the Atlanta Regional Commission, the Atlanta Transit Link Authority, mm -hmm. the new transit services agency, has uh, reached back out to the county, uh, all the counties in the area, and municipalities, yep. and asked for us to submit a, uh, a list of projects, particularly those projects that are most uh, in the near term, and uh, submit estimated budgets on them. They realize that 
the budgeted amounts that we're going to be submitting are not solid uh, because we have not necessarily gone through the process of vetting in that le to that level of detail all of these projects. But to, uh, to that end, we have uh, gone through the list of projects that was initially provided to them uh, without the estimates and uh, put together a list. And I will uh, pass it over to Gary to discuss how we arrived at this particular list. Well, we came uh, about with this list after discussions with the ATL and ARC and also internally Miguel, Jamal and I have had extensive discussions about it. Uh, these projects would basically run through fiscal year uh, 2020 through fiscal year 2026. Uh, um, this is actually a pretty lean list. It's, it's, it's not just a pie in the sky wish list. This, these are pretty solid projects that we will need to undertake uh, as we move forward and um, connect Douglas and Bonds uh, even more. And some of the projects that are listed in here are, of course, continuation of the fixed route service, continuation of the paratransit service, and also uh, implementation of the uh, demand, countywide demand response system. Gary, just, just, um, just, just for the record real quick, and I become you are going in, and just as courtesy, because this is our first um, submission up to April, can you just walk us through the whole list for the record? Sure. So just say that highlight. We don't have to go deep, but I just want for the record this was the official list. But okay. Everybody's not going to ask for this doc. Just quickly, we'll, yep. we'll run through the list. Yep. Um, it spans paratransit fleet. It spans the commuter van food program. Uh, replacement vans for the commuter van food, food program. Uh, vehicles for fixed route expansion. In other words, we would need vehicles for additional routes. Uh, we're on a schedule for replacement vehicles for the fixed route service and paratransit service. Uh, a transit development plan. Uh, what this would be is that uh, enhanced component of the comprehensive transportation plan that we talked about. Uh, bus shelters and amenities for the fixed route service. Uh, hardware and software uh, for the fixed route service. Uh, that would include new fare box equipment and some of the, the real-time outs that we've talked about. Surveillance and security upgrades, that would mainly be fencing around the Transportation Center campus, uh, upgrade of surveillance cameras, uh, preventive maintenance. Uh, we have an allocation that, that we can use to do help uh, in the, the, the upkeep of our vehicles and facilities. Uh, we need staff vehicles. Uh, because with the bus service, uh, uh, part of our staff now is, is out on the road far more than uh, they used to be. Uh, we're talking about land acquisition for two park and ride lots, one in the Liberty Road area, one in the Thornton Road Riverside area. And then, of course, once we uh, acquire the land, we would have to construct the park and ride lots again on Liberty Road and Thornton Road. Uh, Operating the fixed route system on the CMAC grant that we have that runs through 2021. And then the fixed route operational enhancements, that would be our, our efforts to identify additional uh, funding sources uh, to carry the mm -hmm. fixed route service once the CMAC grant expires. And then the last item on the list is the countywide demand response service. Very good. Okay. If I may, yes, please. may add, the, the ATL has indicated that this is the initial call for projects and they anticipate that they will have an annual event for, for a number of years uh, to allow us to either add projects or to refine the budgets as we get into more detail, whether it be in design or just holding in on technology or whatever is needed. So this will not be the only opportunity that we have uh, to um, to add projects and, and uh, define projects. Okay. So, but this is our this does represent Douglas County's initial list, mm -hmm. uh, and this is um, like funding opportunities. What August? This is for the phase July, August. 
Um, when was this due? When is it due? By the end of this month. Oh, okay, so they're right. Okay, so in August they're gonna say what? Um, they got to listen and they gotta go through a refinement process to come out to say, I don't let you know, whatever it is. These projects get awarded. I mean, what's next? Well, they, they are, they, the state has uh, allocated about a hundred million for these types of projects. Now a hundred million uh, our list, just just right. for the sake of comparison, is about estimated at around 35 million. So uh, over over the five year period, uh, this allocation may be for all within one year, or it could be spread out over years. So they have a little bit of money to allocate towards the project, and hopefully there would be additional funding uh, forthcoming. Mm -hmm. The intent of, of this is for them to to have a region-wide look, an assessment as to where things are. And one of the things that they've indicated, for example, if, if we were to, uh, which we have, uh, have a project to enhance our, our fair collection or fair, uh, the technology related to our fair collection, they're going to look at similar requests that may be coming in from other jurisdictions. And then instead of awarding each individual county a sum of money, they will consolidate and uh, have a single project to streamline and synchronize all of those elements. So uh, there is no particular um, expectation that they will choose projects um, specifically for a particular county. Yeah. Uh, they may do that, but in reality, they're looking at the whole universe of projects in the region, and uh, the hundred million dollars they'll be allocating that uh, as as appropriate. Um, the expectation is that the process will play out over the rest of the year into early next year. So, sometime in the first quarter of 2020, we will know if any funding has been allocated. And what projects? First quarter 2020. And, and again, we're going to keep our keep up tight we can. Again, like with our 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 SPLOS, um, you know, from the commissioner's perspective, it takes a minute to get into what's here. Right? We, we, we're going through that three years into the SPLOS. We finally have gotten our mind around. Okay. What was that original list? Right. And, and so um, and, and, and now, once we're into it, we can make adjustments on just the priorities and how do we how do we how do we move through this, recognizing that this is submitted to a, a different authority. Likewise, like this is due end of the week, uh, basically. Um, and um, my fellow commissioners have not had a chance per se to see the list or even wait in on the list. Okay. This is administrative, you gotta get it in. But I think one of the things is, which is very important is that they you, you have to have your buy-in. Because then that's when it comes back and you, when you begin to um, at, um, you know, advance um, a project that has been awarded, it, 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 the commission have to have some type of buy-in to like, okay, I have a, 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 a group, there's a subset of things that we think are the authority. So I, I think as much as we can, this to the county manager and I'll let you work through this um, as, as the bridge that the commissioners have to have a chance to sort of at least, okay, this is where y'all, this is what y'all are suggesting, because this is one of like this thing that's went on through, they haven't seen it. They, they being submitted, and it's binding us to the initial set of lists, but they haven't had a chance to win. And I know the, the, the heartburn they got, you know, the, you won't necessarily heartburn, but just, you know, the submission when you submitted the list for the SPLOS, and it's like now we're on the other side. Like, okay, it was a list that was just created. Yeah, however, you got there, but there was no, um, there was no buy-in um, from a, a key stakeholder that would need to be at the table. So I'm just bring this out. So I'm, I'm saying I haven't had a chance, even though this is coming to a committee. I haven't had a chance to really reflect on. Okay, so what did they just put forth? And how does that line up the way we think that, you know, and again, it's giving feedback. Y'all are driving, y'all the administration, but it's important that we give them some type of view. So, that being said, I won't belabor this point. I think you guys are very clear on what I'm saying. 
This list is so out of this, you're asking for an administrative concurrence. I mean, obviously, we don't have an agenda. Did you get on this board of commissioners to release this? So, what is the ask? It, it would be administrative concurrence. And, and the vast majority of these items are items that have been discussed at one point or another, either through the Transit Services Study of 2015 or ongoing operations that we have. So there are, other than perhaps augmentation of existing services, there isn't anything new here. There have been great crumbs along the way to validate this. Sir. And actually, a number of these projects are, or are already in the Transportation Improvement Program that the ARC uh, puts together. So these projects have, have been vetted uh, through that, that process. And I'd also say, uh, Commissioner, that uh, while, while the full Board of Commissioners hasn't uh, had a chance to look at this full list, which I understand completely, uh, if and when the funding becomes available for these particular projects, individual projects, they would have to come before the Board of Commissioners again. Uh, for approval to move forward. So, Madam Chair, basically, when we decide this committee, um, administrative concurrence with only the single condition, you must let the Board of Commissioners see this fully. In other words, do your paperwork to the ATL, but the Board of Commissioners must simultaneously see what you just submitted. I mean, staff, you got it. You have to share it. It, it can't mm -hmm. be just out of this committee, you go on your way. I want, I want my peers to also have access to what we're releasing. It's that important initially out the gate. So that's if, if, it's, if it's the committee's desire, I'll have this list to the full, out to the full board members by the end of the week. Okay. Along with whatever you submitted, so that there's consistency. I just, we just need to work with me on this. Let me see your application, whatever you submit with this list at the same time. That's my only condition. Let yeah, just happen. let them know that the board, okay. you know, board mm -hmm. approval is required before we mm -hmm. accept these. If the, if, Commissioner, if I may, the, the application for each of these projects is um, how many pages? Significant. It, it's yeah. it's a lot of paperwork that goes to the ultimate goal of implementation of these. So I, I would say, if this would suffice initially, that would be a lot easier to accomplish. I'm okay with the list. And with, if they wanted access to the document, oh, yeah. there, there cannot be sure. prohibition on access to information. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll work with you on that. Mm -hmm. Full list is part of this, Mark. Got it? Mm -hmm. Full Board of Commissioners, as you send it to the ATL, and um, make sure the Board of Commissioners are, are aware that if they want more information, they know how to contact you. Is that fair enough? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Sure. All right. So can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All right. All right, so we got a motion and acceptance to um, give administrative concurrence for the submission of the current project list that came before this transportation committee today um, uh, to the ATL with simultaneous release to the full board of commissioners. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we have a motion second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye, right hand. Aye. Anybody holds? Carry on. Okay, thank you. Jessica, you got that one? Yes, sir. Next item on the agenda is uh, discussion on the website for transit services. Uh, Gary? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll try to keep this as brief. As Connect Douglas evolves uh, with the services that we have now and the services that we'll want to uh, add in the future, we feel like that we will be best served if we have our own standalone website. Uh, the county website is, is, is good, but we feel like if we have our own website that, that we can provide more information uh, in a, a better format, in a broader format, a, a, a better uh, reader-friendly format. So um, uh, we would like uh, for permission to pursue this. Uh, Further, we have money in our budget that we can do this with, and uh, with what we're trying to do with transit and mobility, we just feel like this would would be very important to us. Okay. So, um, two things: um, you've got a budget, which you're going to tell us in a minute how much. So, is this something we plan on in our queue? 
Uh, we just gonna pick somebody, we're gonna do this in house, I'm gonna hold it there. Recognizing that we also have, um, at least I know that there's a, uh, somebody, some committee, I think it's the programming committee, um, that is, uh, I think, Madam Carthen and, and um, Commissioner Mitchell um, are, are involved in as far as the broader rewrite of our, our website. How do we keep those two in sync and um, is it talked about? I'm just curious. Well, we got two um, initiatives going on simultaneously. Yes. I know that we did budget for um, um, obviously this transportation independent of the website even coming online. But now that perhaps it's coming online, is it more of the timing that you've got to go now? By the time we get done with that rewrite, I'm just trying. To, I'm not trying to lead you, but I want to hear why have two separate sites. Well, first of all, I haven't talked to the program programming committee about this. I have. Uh, had a lengthy discussion with Rick Martin okay. about it. Uh, Rick is fine with us moving this because some other county departments programs such as the Sheriff's Office and the Tax Commissioner have their own uh, websites. Um, so this is more of a landing page. This is like a launch. I mean, this is just sort of a, a common place to go. Um, and so you're going to administrate, you're going to be the minister of this site or someone. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you personally, but your, 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 your office will be administrating this. Because um, I, 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 I know how, just talking, what we are trying to accomplish. I mean, what's going to be on the site? What do you think is going to be the functions on this site? It will deal with all the programs that we have. Obviously, the, the fixed route service, but we would talk about the paratransit service, the voucher program, the, the van food program, and any other programs or services that, that, that we bring on board. And, and because of the, the sheer volume of the information that we have to offer, we just think it's an essential that we, we, we are separate uh, from uh, all the other functions that the county provides. So who, uh, so what is the process in which facilitating uh, getting somebody to do this now? I know we've had efforts before, we just hired somebody just randomly, somebody that we knew, and, and, we, and we dropped him a couple of G's to change some colors and stuff, right? We, 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 and I hope we're a little bit more advanced on this one because this one needs to be have a little bit, a little bit more industrial base to it. So, what is your? I mean, I'm curious well, the, how y'all gonna handle the, this. Uh, uh, the estimates that that we have received for what this would cost us is set in the range of seven to ten thousand dollars. So, what we would do is is uh, we wouldn't do, go through a formal RFP process, but we would go out and get at least th three quotes uh, from uh, the individual firms that do this type of work. And, and I know that there are a number of firms right here in Douglas County capable of doing this this work. So that would be the process. Yeah, so you got into messages, you went out and talked to a couple of people. Uh, but, but, but with that, this is like, it's not, I'm, I'm on this one, I'm, I'm trying, I wouldn't support this. Okay, I got three quotes, and you know, the staff just gets to pick who gets 10 grand out of this because this is a project that was, to your point, a lot of people should have access to it. It needs to be an open and clean process. So I'm curious, Bill, is, is this a, just a simple RFI or RFQ? I mean, what would you suggest on this one? Uh, our current procedure is that we not do any formal bid, whether it's an RFP an RFQ, RFI, unless the value of the project exceeds $50,000. So as Gary said, the normal process is for the department to go receive, for seven to $10,000, he would need to receive three written quotes from current Douglas County vendors, um, a minimum of three. Now, if we knew that there were more companies in Douglasville that could provide the service, we could actually send out the quote to them as well um, and, and even get more than three quotes in mm -hmm. if they're willing to send us quotes. And then base the decision, or either bring those quotes back to this committee or allow, an, uh, 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 again, myself and Miguel and uh, uh, Gary to sit and look at those quotes and determine who we think uh, would be able to provide the best website that we're looking for. I'll read with the RFP. We don't need to send me a page. Um, I, I'll read perhaps an RFP. But like with the quote, um, I, I have a 
experience to be at the website, knowingdelta.com. So I, but I think that the RFI, we're going to go back to need to populate our database of knowing people out there. Our universe typically is only who we know. Right? So I'm going to go ask some folks from just people that we know in our immediate universe, but just like I just came back from Vegas, ooh, there's some opinions in California and Arizona that's just like, wow, that's very insightful. Right? We've got to get outside perhaps our bubble. Um, and, and I'm going to say that, and, and this is constructively that says, on this one, if y'all going to spend $10,000, um, I think there's a lot of people that would like the opportunity to even know that it existed. Um, and, and I think there's a way to, you know, there's a bigger picture here. Because likewise, those same people will eat up to uh, obviously the bigger website process. And they may not qualify, but we just don't know. I'm just real, I'm cautious about um, just, mm, and I'm sure on this one, I, I'm thinking that we need to just release an RFI, put it out there. Don't self-select, you know, don't, don't be strategic in who you give this to, which is sometimes um, it can happen when people have a perception that that's what we do. Like, no, put that thing out there, post it. Hey, RFI, give me some basic information. It can be the equivalent of a quote. You don't have to make it big, but just simple. Give me some information on your firm, and then you guys can go through that. Um, I just think more people need to know about this thing. To, uh, I, I think we have a, a good real opportunity here, and I'm just I'm cautious about um, oh, wait, I'm going to stop here. Any thoughts, Madam Chair, or anybody else? If it's the will of this committee that we produce a document that would be um, advertised in the Sentinel, that would be placed on our website under current bids and awards, mm -hmm. as well as send paper copies out to those companies that we already know exist, mm -hmm. And that's the process we would use if you do want to, in fact, make this a semi-formal invitation to bid. Okay, go back to RFI request for information. Mm -hmm. We just want to know who's out there. You can still, it's almost like a two-step process. Request for information, like, okay, give me everybody out there that, that you know, based on website design, whatever the case may be. And then out of that, you can go through your formal process of perhaps selecting. I, I just, it, it just, to pick three without knowing the full universe is where I, I'm trying to avoid that error. How you handle it once you get the population of people in here, I'm okay. But if you just like, I only know these three people on these three streets, and it's this bigger universe of people who had no idea, I, I'm afraid that we're, why not let everybody know? And then within that, you can now begin to, based on this, this filter, that's all I'm trying to get to. So you're in agreement that we would put it in the paper as an ad, and we would put it on our website, and we would send it out to those 10, 15, whatever number of companies are that we know in our vendor database perform this kind of service. Is that, the, is that what you're looking for? How much does it cost? To, I mean, two things. Can I put it on my site? Independent of the add on or the add cost. And, and the ad would be about 100 bucks. Okay, all right, so it's, it's in, you know, based on the contract. That's not that's fine. I went out about that. You're going to cast a lot, just a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But the, most, the, the piece that's most crucial, crucial to me is that vetting that piece, to make sure we've got the right person that's sitting there what they're doing with the website. Oh, that's, that's crucial. But other than that, cast a lot. I'm in agreement. Gary? No, I'm, if, if that's the committee's uh, direction, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. We'll do some work, support, not exceed ten thousand dollars. All in. That's what I'm asking. So I heard you say a range. I'm going to say not exceed ten thousand dollars. <laughs> All in. Mark, we can wait on this. We want to discuss it openly. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think it really. I don't think it really matters whether it's standalone or whether it's part of our website because on our website we can put a link to the website anyway. So mm -hmm. to me it's the same. Right. I, I will say this that um, that this just adds an additional amount of work to the purchasing department uh, because it is it's labor intensive to put all the forms together to send them out and printing and copying and et cetera, et cetera. So it's uh, I just wanted to make that point that it's not a free Set of work that we're doing there's a cost to it. I understood. Which is well, okay. So to that point, uh, 
there's a, and I don't, this is where, well, you can submit stuff online. I don't know where we are. This is my whole point of meeting to advance our capacity to be able to engage commercial, to your point. We just get out of the, the labor intensive business. We're not there today, so we, right now we're in between states. Which is why I said, well, can you keep it a simple RFI? Can, 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 you, can you keep it simple? Don't make it 98 pages, right? Or 70, 78 pages for program management, right? Like, okay, gosh, just don't make this that hard. But you, you, you should at least be able to have me. It's just the basic information. Do you think there's going to be a huge volume? Or, I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't know how many of the current vendors we have in our system that we would need to send it to. Uh, we're also required these days to put uh, our ads and bids on the state website, uh, and that generates attention statewide. And then we have to respond to those. So we're required to put this on state for something less than ten thousand. There was a bill passed last year uh -huh. that required that, uh, and it, it, I'll have to go back and check the amount, uh, what the requirement is <coughs> monetarily. But we have to put all of our formal invitations to bid, requests for proposals, and requests for qualifications on the state website, and they open that up to everybody within the state that has an interest in it. So again, it's just it's just some procedural things that we have to go through. It's it's uh, preparing the documents, copying it, putting the <coughs> envelopes, you know, and just the just administrative work that has to be done to make this happen. And we're gonna go back to okay, we're gonna come back to professional services. One more time. We go out to people. Why are we making it seem like like what I just heard you say like what why would they do that? Professional services less than fifty thousand dollars. We'll come back with that. Consultants, lawyers, right? We'll come back full circle to that. It's like okay. Now you, we've never done that. We've never had to do that. I hear you when you said formal RFP, formal RFQ. We're just saying we just want requests for information. We can. It's a solicitation. So when when I'm saying a request for information, it's just a basic email or something. I'll say, hey guys, send us your information. Well, that's a quote. That's what we do in the quote process. Okay. We ask for mo money and also uh, we give a list of things that they have to be able to perform. So it's a quote. It's right. a quote. It's right. not an RFI, RFP, RFQ. Right. Okay, but all right, so semantics and names, we're going to give you. It's, it's going to accomplish the same thing. You're going to want a but it's still a request for information. Right, so you're still going to post it online, post it on legal. And it's still a request for information, which is okay, you want to call it a quote. But it, it accomplishes the same function, which is I want to know who you are, what you do, um, and some, some basic information. So um, so it should not have to go up on the state's website or anything. It's like, no, guys, I've seen them up at $10,000. You, you shouldn't have to open me. That was real, like, no, I'm glad you said it. It's like, no, that's not what we're trying to do. This is $10,000. It shouldn't be this hard. We're just trying to say, hey, man. Clear who's locally. Let's go out to our database. Let's go out here and put on our website. Hey guys, here's an opportunity. We shouldn't have to open ten thousand dollars to the whole world. That doesn't make any sense. But can we just create a one pager that says, "Here's an opportunity. I need y'all to help us accomplish that." Oh, I mean, I'm hearing obstacles for what we're trying to get done. It's like, come on, guys, work with us. All we're trying to do is fulfill what you asked for with these conditions. We're like, we're agreeing not to exceed ten thousand dollars. We're agreeing. Go forward administratively, like, okay, we just want to make sure that the universe of people who see this gets to see it. Uh, can put it on our website. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me just offer this. Uh, we generally, when we seek quotes, we know who is out there that can do what we're looking for. It could be through a listing, say, if it's a transportation project, a listing at the Georgia DOT database. Sure. So we, we, we already know who is available to do this work. Mm -hmm. And we may send out potentially 20, 30 different, we call them scopes of project. Here's what we're wanting to do. If you're interested, you can provide a quote on this. But that's people that we know can do it. What you're asking, what I think I hear you asking for is, there might be people out there or agencies that 
we don't know about, we want to make sure that they are aware. Well, the only process that I'm aware of to do that is the fully advertised process. There, there is no middle ground. You have to do a legal advertisement. It gets picked up by the state database. It gets picked up by the, by the media as well. And then they become aware. That's, that would be either an RFI or, or an RFQ. Um, but the provision that's been made for lesser expenditures is, okay, if you know there's 50 firms out there that do this type of work, you can send them all a notice. But if there's 10 more that you don't know about, they wouldn't get it because you, you have no way of knowing they exist. That's it. Now, again, I, I appreciate again, I, the way you, you frame that back up toward the RFI, you know, RQRP. We're not trying to go that way. I, I think there is a middle ground back to like, gosh, I know what we're trying to accomplish. We're just trying to let people know here in Douglas County, there's an opportunity. Uh, this is only a $10,000 website. My experience with Delta is it's $10 million for their website. Second year was $20 million. Right? This is only $10,000. There's somebody out there that can actually do this. But we just want to say, hey, we, we had some questions about our database, our vendor. Um, we know that we need to populate it. Let's just give people a chance. So it's just local. Put it on our website. Here's a $10,000. Like, why are we making this? That's all we're trying to do. Help us accomplish letting people know in Douglas County. Um, and I'm trying to avoid the strategic placement, like, okay, we're going to drop this person. Because I, I had a problem with this. Is, I'm going to say this for the record. I had a problem with um, our prior facelift on our website for Douglas County, which is, if somebody had a chance to just go pick somebody. And you just, like, how did this person get this contract that never came before anybody, and they're just awarding contracts and doing facelifts? So, like, now how did this go down? It, that type of... I, I, I don't want to experience that again. Like, nobody got a chance to look at that. Nobody. And, and, but everybody was silent about it. So it was a strategic placement of funds out of this county to somebody that, that okay, wasn't fair. We're saying, okay, we get it. We, but we want to make it at least a fair process that, okay, were you at least aware? You've got room. See, you're not listening. You've got room. But at least we let people know. To not let them know is a problem for me. Um, seeing that all of our jobs and everything we do is for the very people that we're sort of blocking against, right? I just need to work with us. So, as opposed to be belaboring this, so I guess, do we need to talk about this more? We got other stuff we got to talk about. I have one question. Yeah. Don't we need a scope? If we don't have a scope, how can they give us? How can they give us a quote? Well that's, well, that's yeah, that's what we would do, and that goes back to the one-page document you're you're talking about. We we would provide that working with uh, Mr. Peacock, Peacock. We would develop that scope, and then I, I honestly believe that between him advertising it in the Sentinel and putting it on our web page, that we'll get plenty of uh, proposals for it. I think that honestly, well, I didn't hear that earlier. Really. All I heard was we were. Requesting information, but no one did. No, yeah. that, uh, uh I can't <coughs> So Miguel, help us out. How to reframe this? One pager. Uh, um, yeah, we we define the scope of service. Yeah, one page. We publicize it on our website yeah. and put it on an ad in the newspaper. Yeah. And uh, then we let people approach us with, I can do it, yeah. and then we qualify those. Qualify. Yes. And then we move from there. Move from there. Eric, can you handle that? Yes, sir. Okay. You understand you're not to exceed 10,000. You recognize that you're going to, um, uh, two parts, make people aware of, of through the ad and through our site. That's it. Okay. Agreement? Yes, sir. Mark? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure you guys are mm -hmm. you're, you're listening. Okay, all right, because I want to keep this going. All right, so can we get a motion for an administrative concurrence to allow Gary Watson to move forward? on the website enhancement specifically for um we're going to call it what intermodal or transit or so it's connect douglas mm -hmm. or connect douglas uh, with a budget <coughs> not to exceed ten thousand dollars which is currently sourced out of his existing budget yes sir okay um with the process is that there will be um a scope of work that will be presented to the public and posted on the 
um, Douglas County's website and on um, um, in the Sentinel. Mm -hmm. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor say raise your hands by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Most curious. All right, very good. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Transit Services. That concludes their uh, yep. items. Now, the next item on the agenda is an update on the comprehensive transportation plan update. We yep. had discussion at the last meeting. There was some, uh, I guess, conflicting information that has been provided. We have reached back out to uh, the Atlanta Regional Commission to confirm uh, why there would have been different uh, pieces of information. And what we found out is that essentially we were, we were talking about two different things. Uh, one individual that we talked to at the ARC was mm -hmm. talking about having a, a, a transit services component within the transportation plan whereas the other individual was thinking in terms of a totally separate standalone transit services study. Yeah. And so that's why they, they had offered different uh, uh, possibilities. Certainly the, the opportunity is there both uh, through the Atlanta Regional Commission and the FTA to do a totally separate transit services study. However, for purposes of the Comprehensive Transportation Plan update, the funding um, maximum amount of federal funds is $500,000 with a local match of $125,000. And anything over that amount would be an exposure to the county. So the agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission, that is the, the funding amount. And that's um, where we are at this point. Uh, so I, I would open that up to discussion. Uh, right, so we've got, all right, so 500 to 50, we've already got funding for that, right? We've already budgeted for that, right? 500 and 125, and there Probably is, yeah. yeah, 500 and 125, that is budgeted. Then there's an additional 125. There's an additional 125 that, that's been discussed, that would be on the county, but if, if uh, uh, depending on where did so the RFQ comes back in, right? How much of that would have to be explained? Right, so let me make sure I get this right. So we submitted something up, 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 and the 500 was initially awarded. The conversation we've had in times past is that that could be beefed up. My understanding is that it's already been beefed up as much as it could be mm -hmm. based on the current award amount 500,125. The Board of Commissioners earlier this year. You know, we uh, set aside like, well, look, we got 125. We're willing to further enhance it if we could be. If there was additional money, um, either we, in my understanding, that we, we, we did miss our window for perhaps funding opportunity, but there was another one coming in August. Is that accurate? That is correct. Okay, that's, that's fine. We'll be there. All right, so now, so based on where we are, we know that we got 125 to the side, and then you got your current um, scope of work that we've already have down the path on. Um, are you ready to release the RFQ or RFQ, what we call an RFQ of RFP? It, it, would, it would be an RFP. All right, so you got a formal RFP that's being released to the community. Um, how ready are we? Are we, are we truly shovel ready? Well, we are very close. Um, once we make the decision as to whether it's going to be a combined or separate, then I will package that and then, uh, by early next month we should be ready to advertise. Combined or separate, but still, the addition 125 is that we're funding one fully. There's no leverage of our capital stack. In other words, mm -hmm. we're right. But is the current 500 125 already beefed up, and we were just amplifying that? Okay. Yeah, essentially, we uh, the initial grant was 312,000 in federal funds. Right. Mm -hmm. That was beefed up to half a million. And so that is the maximum that, that they could do based on the funding source that they had at the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, where we are is if we do an RFP yep. for the scope of, of services, including the transportation side and the transit uh, study elements, then that will come back in at some figure. We 
we anticipate that perhaps with the additional 125, we should be able to do that. So, so yeah, so we could uh, do a combined transit services and transportation study uh, for the amount of the 625 plus the additional 125 that the county would to. Well, the, the board base has already acknowledged the fact that they're willing to put 125 on this. Um, Madam Chair, I'm okay with um, So your next step would be what? To release this? To, to release the combined document for both of us. That's combined one contract? One contract. One contract. One, one study. One study with separate tasks within it? In other words, would they, do we care? How they go about executing this? Not necessarily. They, they, uh, the firm would have to have the capability to do both, and and these are similar but not identical uh, analyses. I see. So it, it potentially would be a firm that would have both component capabilities, or one that pairs up with another one. Right. And so you may have two different teams, part of the same group, part of the same analysis. The two different teams looking at different elements of that process. All right, so in my mind, I would say, all right, so we, we talk this out. So, all right, so our, our, our transit system did start, right? So here, here, stay with me. So from June to June, we've got basically what, um, that's one full year. Um, can this be staggered? How long will this CTP be done? In other words, you've got one person that's been awarded this contract for recognizing you've got the, the normal transportation and you've also got a simultaneously, because they do overlap, there is, but they're slightly different. And as we get more evidence, like, so this is, um, can this be spread over a three year period of time to get the full analysis of our transit? That's, that's all I'm trying to accomplish. It takes you 18 months, basically, to accomplish 18 months, 24 months? What, how long is it going to take me to do it, It's going to take uh, 15 months to do the, uh, the, the transportation plan. Right, mm -hmm. so and, and we do have an agreement with uh, with the ARC that gives us a, a sunset date on that agreement. And so the expectation is that, yeah, so... so there is a formal planning regarding this that I think is necessary, Madam Chair, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not necessarily saying I would, I would force the 125 onto this right now. I think that we, sufficiently we, we've discussed this and we've gone round and round and I, I feel sufficient that the 500 will accomplish what we need to do as is. And we, we, I think the 125 is, you hold it for formal planning. And I, and I don't know, does that make sense? In other words, what, what I heard you say is that uh, you're doing a lot at something that we're only going to get so much yield from, right? And it's, it, it perhaps it's better better spent somewhere else. Not putting words in your mouth, but I would like for you to. Well, uh, essentially, <laughs> essentially, because of where we are yes. at, as a county in terms of just having started yep. the expanded services, there isn't a, as much effort as it normally it would be for that for the transit service. I got you. So, <clears throat> you you could, in fact, you routinely do as part of the comprehensive transportation plan analysis yeah. study yeah. updates. You look at transit, but you don't look into transit in depth. You look at overall needs, future needs, is there a component of a regional plan that affects the county? It's that high level look. Yeah. This could um, be a situation where we're doing something in between two separate studies and a regular CTP. It would be an augmented look at the transit side, but not a full study. All right, so to, to your point, and I think that's, and maybe we're looking at this in an inverted way, but I like what you just said. I, I was at the bottom, you just mentioned something at the top. You've got the county, but they're all, uh, what I've been trying to drive on this point is they're lining us all the way up, right? This whole mm -hmm. alignment with the new ATL, with the, you know, just the, the ATL. Mm -hmm. I, I don't hear that part of planning that had been, and I, I thought that would be part of this. But you're saying, no, this is strictly Douglas County, strictly transit, we're only, you know, the, the egg has only, it, it's only been birthed two months, right? It's too mm -hmm. early, too soon. This is sufficient. I mean, it, it can't eat all this. The, the study will not have enough information to absorb to even bring any real value. 
But but I think as part of that, I think the goal is also that you got this ATO that's dropping down on us. Mm -hmm. They got them, um, they're, they're down this path, and so I'm like, well, what, what's watching that? I, and, and this is forming as we go. It's not part of this. You, you're doing this independent of the ATO ever existed. The CTP has always existed, mm -hmm. right? So right. who's aligning that part? So let's just say I, maybe well, there's a separate body of work. Let me let me clarify that some, because <clears throat> before the ATO was created, the ARC was doing that. They, okay, they right. looked at the transit side as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it's always been part of the CTP. Uh -huh. uh, certain counties that have more mature transit services components, yep. they have had to separate the two because they are, they have a lot of infrastructure, uh, a lot of needs. And so they've gone that route. But where we are, we could enhance that component and still keep it primarily a CTP update. Not, Go ahead here, please. <clears throat> of course, I, again, I'm not sure of the, the timing that Miguel would have with, uh, with this process, but as far as the transit side of it, I'd be real hesitant to do any kind of study um, until we've been operating a year. There's so, so everything is in so much flux between now and, and then what we have right now maybe it's entirely different than what we have in, in a year. So that so that would be the yeah. I'm hearing the leave it as is for right now. It's sufficient what it has based on what the current requirements we, we still have to talk about transit mm -hmm. because it's part of the CTP, right? But as far as some enhanced component I'm hearing right? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah I, I was saying maybe two different things or no? Well uh, and excuse me for stepping in again, but, but with him doing that, as he does the CTP, they could have a transit element in there. It right. just wouldn't go into a whole lot of depth. Mm -hmm. And then later on, a, a year from now, when we had a chance to operate and, and things have settled down, then we can come back in and, and do that comprehensive look at transit. Which is, I think, what we're seeing, especially to make this one contract, they acknowledge whoever they award the contract, they have two deliverables, two components, right? They're, they're delayed, it's just what it is. Okay, phase one, the CTP in whole. Phase one B or phase two is this transit component based on, but what I just heard you say is that what the state says, I mean, yeah, we, well, we see, have a timeline. We, we have a timing issue and we have a funding issue. Because our contract with the ARC is gonna be for what it is now, 500,000 yep. and our local match. Anything else additional, we have to be tracked differently to potentially be a different funding source mm -hmm. for. Uh, so we would not have the ability to have a single contract and stagger. It would, it would either be a CTP. Now, if you, if you say, let's forget about for a minute about the enhanced component of transit. Yep. To do a CTP update mm -hmm. includes transit. It just doesn't get into detail. That's at the same level as uh, a more fully uh, mature agency would. But it will look at the interaction between the ATF, the ARC, the county, concept three, the, the long-term transit component. Yeah. It looks at all of those elements. It just essentially says, okay, county, uh, you are going to be part of this longer term proposition to have this type of service get to your county or go through your county, as the case may be. It doesn't get into the details of what kind of ridership or the stations potentially going to be. That is what a more detailed transit services study is. Yeah, see, that, that's what the challenge is, is how this is rolling out. But we have long term capital planning. There's things that we also have right on our side and I'm trying to get information so that that's the reconciliation like when I'm listening but we have objectives as well right it's, it's just not for what you need it's what the board commissioners needs as a whole right like okay well but that we got to line that up with everything else that we're responsible for for doing it so I'm trying to line up like okay so when is that information going to come in as in hands and when are you doing that and everything else Mark can bring before us and so it's not you get what I'm saying? So I'm trying to line this up. I'm like, okay, Rachel, we got this long-term capital plan. 
we got these big chunks. Like, so you get where I'm like, okay, yeah. I need, there's a need for information. Um, um, and so um, I get the process. We're just trying to line up everything, right? It's not in isolation. It's like, okay, we gotta line this whole system up to make sure we can make adequate decisions on behalf of the public. And that's the part all I'm trying to get at. I'm sure like, okay, what I don't want to do is be lacking something that was key at a good milestone moment that we didn't have the information. So we're forcing it. So, so for right now, I'm, I'm okay with just um, the capital camp, the capital, I'll say it, Com comprehensive yeah. transportation plan mm -hmm. um, um, as is with the 500, um, with the 125 match, um, moving forward with that, recognizing that we also have the 125 that's, that we need to, we still need to think through that, if that makes sense. So I, I'm still, um, oh, but, yeah. Commissioner, it's two separate things. Yeah, I mean, but but I have to I have to define the scope of services of the document, okay. either to include or not. That no, keep them, no, keep them separate. It's just the 125 that. Okay. Because I'm, I got to stay with what the board commissioners hit. Uh -huh. Legislatively passed. Mm -hmm. Which was 125 was going to go to transportation planning, right? It was just this because you hadn't come back to the scope. You were just trying to, right? You hadn't come back. You're saying you're about to award this contract. So I'm saying, okay, don't include that 125 in what you do. Leave it alone now. But there's still this 125 that had already been legislatively, mm -hmm. like, that was going to get it. So it's a second scope of work that, that's to be determined, which is. To your point, maybe not right now, or some other type of alignment. So, okay. right. I'm, I'm good. You got that. room in there now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, good not, that. I'm, I'm not saying throw it in. I'm mm -hmm. saying you got room to think through this, but I don't want to delay this any further. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gary, mm -hmm. good. Mark, mm -hmm. yes, sir. All right. So, all right. So, can I get a motion to go ahead and um, get administrative concurrence to uh, at least the a comprehensive transportation plan, RFP, um, not to exceed $500,000 with a $125,000 local match. Mm -hmm. um, so moved. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, one point of discussion is that the 125 that was allocated or appropriated by the Board of Commissioners will mm -hmm. remain um, within this, um, uh, we'll just say in the fund. Uh, until um, a more formal plan comes up with uh, how we um, get better information. Okay, if I may further clarify, <laughs> please, that the 125 you're referencing is not the 125 local match. Correct. Like There's two of them. They, they understood. Yep. Two separate amounts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jessica, did you get that? You yes, got it. Okay, now, good clarification. That was the supplemental amount that the Board of Commissioners came out with, um, I think, back in April. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm almost certain it was April. Okay. All right, we got a motion and second. No further discussion. All in favor of this action, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the Maxim Road project. Uh, that This project has been, um, uh, we, we had bids come in. The bids were sent to the uh, Georgia Department of Transportation yep. as is required for their review and concurrence. Yep. The result of those of, of that exercise is forthcoming. We should be receiving a funding agreement from, from GDOT uh, to essentially solidify that we have the, the federal funds uh, allocated to the project and those funds are, are going to be in the amount of one one million seven hundred seventy five thousand two hundred twenty nine dollars and seventy eight cents. Now, with the bid having come in at two two million eight hundred fifty thousand five hundred eighty dollars and eighty one cents. And a GDOT oversight cost, which is required on all federal projects of 2,500, that leaves an, a, a, an amount to be funded by the county uh, of one million seventy-seven thousand eight hundred fifty-one dollars and three cents. Yep. Now, in the 
in the capital transportation fund. Mm -hmm. Can you say that number one more time? Uh, the last one million seven hundred seventy thousand eight. One million seventy-seven thousand. Eight hundred fifty-one. Oh three. Okay. Got it. All right. So, uh, in the capital transportation fund, there was an allocation of six hundred eleven thousand five hundred sixty-nine dollars towards the project based on the original estimate. Yeah. Uh, we would need an additional, at least a minimum of $666,282.03. My recommendation would be uh, that we allocate another, to round up that number a little bit, $480,000 to, to the project because as with all construction projects, there's going to be things that happen, measurements that are slightly different out in the field. Things are going to change, and rather than to have to come back before the board for you know, a few more nails mm -hmm. that are needed out of, uh, to, to get the project done, we just, I would recommend a little cushion in there, 15,000 or so. So, um, the, the, this, the discussion element and the decision and the guidance from the committee would be where to allocate the additional funding. The CTF has the 611,000 and change, and we need another 480,000. So, we need to have a broad perspective. And as I say, transportation consumed has got a big appetite. It does, and, and Commissioner, the the uh, the economy being as the way it is, uh, the bids are just moving in higher for even the things that you know, that are current, let alone projects that have been in the mill for a number of years. I, and I understand. And, and here in Las, where I'm, I'm always careful never to, to, to promise, never to oblige myself to like you can't do it all. It is going to be a, a max, it's going to max out. There's always going to be capacity for anything, right? It's just that. So I'm listening, and I'm listening to like as this comes online, and whenever it's shovel ready, it's shovel ready. But there's a, there's a, okay, we gotta, we, we, we just can't, uh, you can't just throw it too empty either. I, I, okay, guys, we gotta slow this down just a little bit. And it's the reality, right? You, you, you only can do so much. I know there's aspirations, but you're busy enough. I mean, we can finally catch up though. We do things that we know we, Ooh, you got a breather. But I mean, it's, it's trajectory, it's math. It's like, guys, this is going to burn very fast. Like, you know, we probably got two months worth of more work that you could actually fund where you, based on your appetite, it, like, we, we, that's it. So I'm, I'm setting expectations that says, I get it. Okay, I know this is important. And there's other things that are as important as, as other people need it and want it. I'm just saying, you can't do it all. Right. And, and it's based on, the, to your point, the current economy. Though it's good, it also has an inverted especially because everything's inflated. Mm -hmm. right. So, so, and, and so, and if you're trying to, not trying to just get stuff to be getting done, like you're going to add a burden to the, to the taxpayers in such a way that, I mean, you can, not could you, but should you, and would you politically. So I'm saying, well, I'm sure based on the hand that you currently have, it's like, okay, we probably got a couple more shots in because we're going to slow this down. I'm just, my thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, it's only so much we can do, and I'm just having this conversation in this committee. Because again, you got a lot of stuff, and it's all right here, but it's like, guys, we only got so much. I mean, you, right, you about to take what, 483 out of 611? And how will we fund the rest? So, Mark, you know, we got a big pipe like sitting there and stuff that we know is important. And when people need excess of, you know, extra stuff, and because it came in costing more, I'm fine. But at some point, it's like, well, that's it for now. Now, we're at the six month mark, seven month, no, going into the eight month. But seven, we're already at the turn already. We got five more months left um, before we go into the new year. Um, and so we can revisit perhaps that. But, you know, then you've got to. This is where our capital transportation fund is replenishing it every year, and so you know, I, I, you know, I get that. Um, so I'm, 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 I want to just say that for the record that we do acknowledge that there's only so much capacity. That being said, the current item at, at hand, 
Maxon Road. So for the ass right now, let's just keep our agenda going because you got some other stuff on here. Four, you got White Stone right behind this. Um, <laughs> what else is it? So the ask is what specifically? Four hundred eighty thousand dollars additional allocation to the maximum road project. Right, so four eighty that's going to come out of the source of the capital transportation fund. Mm -hmm. well, that's the discussion. That's a discussion. As opposed to. The, 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 now, the other options, SPLOS. SPLOS. Now, SPLOS has a little bit more cushion. Uh, back to it is part of that whole Thornton Road corridor. Um, I'm open for discussion. Um, I'm, I'm, but then you're, one more time, you're, you're taking one from the, the down that right. It's going to be all the same. So Mark, what, what say if the I need you to weigh in on this one? We've got two sources now. He has a need, but then we've got a, you know, what he's working on, but there's a broader economic development that we have inside on. So yeah. Okay, so I'm, just to make sure we're on the same page, so you have 611 allocated, so you need 466, 283, 282, 03, right? At least that much. Um, and and, and the balance in the CTF is four something? It's, it's, I thought it was 573. Yeah, that maybe, but it's close. Yeah. So that would pretty much wipe out the CTF. We can get the exact number. Um, I thought it was right here, but I'm not mm -hmm. seeing it. 571832. That sounds right. Yeah, so 571832. If you take it from SPLOST, um, What's the balance of names boss based on the ten million that we got? Based on the economic development category it was two million, but we've also had other discussions about other projects in that same category. <coughs> but um, so yeah, right at two million. You know, right side, but hold on. The question is do you take nine percent of the current CTL or do you take it out of this the spot? You basically want to zero down the capital transportation fund, which is primarily I'm sure funded through appropriations mm -hmm. by the general fund versus the SPLOS, which is, you know, it, it, it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I would say, I think I would have to go, I would say, um, you need a CTF to be spread across all, whereas the economic development is primarily concentrated in, um, obviously, the district two is totally for one role, and if I'm spreading that out, I'd rather the CTF was was not all about District 2. It should be other. It was an appropriation for the full account, right? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some, uh, and how that should be done. So I would say take it out. I'm okay. Now, <coughs> within this community, I'm cool with whatever the vote is. I'm not pushing this one or another. But I would say take it out of the, the SPLOS as opposed to um, zeroing out the CTF. That would just be me for District 2. Yeah. I'm okay with that. And I'm sure the glad for the mark what you think. Yeah, I mean, you know, oh, that's really our only two funding sources. I know, but you've got to one way. It's only in. Um, I would say SPLOS, but if you do that, then it's going to hurt some other projects we've been discussing here. Mm -hmm. You're lucky. But it's either way. But, yeah, it's either way. But it's either way. And, okay, so. All right, so either way. Now, um, this project has pre existed. All right, so let's go back to you. This project has pre existed, it's lost. It's been out there for a while. Mm -hmm. right, just, we've been working on the wait for the state, wait for the state, had to get the recession, we put our money in. We've been working on this prior to SPLOS even existing. So, so to that point, I go back to the other one. It was like, okay, well, and we were funding it through primarily through those annual mark. You remember, okay, $500 for this, a million dollars for this, we need more, we can just go back and forth to replenish the capital share, um, comprehensive transportation fund, CTF fund. Um, so, so that, okay, it was capital. So that being said, um, all right, so it was really born out of that um, over there. Is this project actually part of SPOS? No, I don't believe No, it's not. Yeah. Based on that, go back the other way. That's why we have this discussion. 
I say take it out of the uh, CTO and leave as possible. Okay. Uh, on the CTF, will we be replenishing it for the new budget year? So we'll just wipe this out and then we'll do have some left over, but we're saying that, sorry, that's not about, yeah. we, we were saying that, um, yes. That's what I'm saying, we'll be replenishing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. FY20, uh, fiscal year 20. You need it now? Can you go get closer to the. I, I, I need it. Year? I need it now because what the, the next step is going to be. Once we get the funding agreement from GDOT, which I'll bring to the board, that is our commitment, that is the county's commitment that uh, we are going to uh, allocate the, the funds and award the contract uh, at that point. So, so right now we're talking about the funding and the agreement with GDOT. Mm -hmm. The actual contract award will come later once we have that in place and then Bill We'll go through uh, the bid process and the number of bids and what where they came in and all like that because we would be talking about actually awarding the contract to the vendor. Right now we're talking about the funding commitment that we're going to need when we get the contract from GDOT. And by the way, the contract now they tell me is going to come electronically instead of a hard copy. Uh, GDOT is moving to an electronic approval process mm -hmm. and we are, if not the first, one of the first counties to uh, get an electronic uh, copy of the contract to the route through. So we'll be the guinea pigs for GDOT. Okay, okay so I guess my next question is, um, I see Whitestone is mixed. Sounds yes. like we need something for these way. We do. So, okay, so, so, so say we, we finished the fine. So you got this max roll. And we're gonna go back to what happened with re roll, which is when there's time to put up money. Like for whatever reason, we, we, we took courses of actions in times past that we had to clean up for whatever reason. And so again, I'm, I'm listening to the new one more time, we got limited dollars. We are committed with money in. We got Cobb County involved in this. Obviously, we worked with them, obviously, um, in fixing the max room, the, the congestion over there. Um, obviously, that's one of the main um, out, um, it pours out on to Thornton to get to the highway. Uh, we, we understand that. All right, so, again, maybe to, to sort of frame the conversation, is we needed 600 for one project. Um, and, and so, what is unique for the second project? I'll get into the next item, or yeah. are we in? Uh, well, it's a framing. It's a, a framing for yeah, this one. You just gotta, it is what it is, guys. All right, so yeah, let me, let me get to the, get you. I'm pausing this enough not to have to commit without, like, I'm trying to give consideration. I know what I'm going to Okay, uh, Whitestone, uh, we're looking at 135,000, dollars in additional funding. To the 800, 700,000 that was already given? Yes. 800 that was given by squads. That's all right. Right, and there's other funding sources for I stand yeah, right, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. This would be on top of I right, so I right, add these two up. All right, so, so what is that? Thirty five, what was it? Hundred thirty five, five hundred thirty one and sixteen cents. Yeah. For the total amount is needed right now. One million three hundred twenty one thousand five hundred twenty nine dollars and sixty six cents is the total new contract price. Right, that's for West. Right. So right now, the he's just saying the four hundred eighty thousand plus one hundred thirty-five. He just want to know the committee. What, what is the committee ask right now between these two projects? We have two ask. Four hundred eighty thousand plus one hundred thirty-five thousand. One hundred thirty-five is six something. Six fifteen. Mm -hmm. All right, so. so. Okay. 
Okay, so in this case, it's not either or both go. Okay. They both go. Um, mm -hmm. so you can. All right, so so Whitestone originally the the original 800 came out of Sideway and Mobley upgrades, mm -hmm. which is post road big, pretty much post road big savings. Mm -hmm. yes, there's 300,000 estimated balance in that uh, category. So you pull that over here. Else that, that would be our out. recommendation. What for the 153? The 135. 135. Yeah, 135. That's all. It would come out of the mm -hmm. Like everything Sound else. Sound talking real quick. Like everything else, when you get the actual numbers up, there's an inflation, right? And so we. So side walks in. And then this place. And we'll. Yeah, well, this one wasn't really inflation. It was. Well, the cut, the uh, footings, the footing design that was bid were incorrect. Mm -hmm. So after the bid, we received the actual footing design, yep. the correct one, and prices went up. Of course, if we'd have had the footing design, the correct one in the bid to start with, it, you know, it would have been higher anyway. So it's more concrete. Right. Right. Which, bigger. Is, which is still, it's okay. I mean, it, it, it's not critical, so. Okay. What we're saying. So, Mark, we're going to let you help. 135 is coming out of the this, uh, this plus, um, what do you call it, maybe? Sidewalk and roadway upgrades. Sidewalk and roadway upgrades. That would be our recommendation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your second recommendation was the maximum road, or are you sourcing that product? The floor. From the CTF. From the CTF. And the actual balance is the 571. I confirm that. I'm fine with that, sure. you okay? Mm -hmm. have a little bit of yeah, you're fine. But, but recognize, we go, we, right? Okay. Steady. I mean, it, it's okay. It's, it's, you can only do so much. It, 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 that's the part of our conversation that we have to have. You can only do so much. We don't have to over promise to the public. It's like we've done a great job just doing what we've done based on this current floss and stuff. So it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but don't feel as though that, okay, that's it. We can't, that's what I'm saying. You can't commit stuff that, like, other people's money in such a way that, like, okay, we were going to get to all these products. No, you can't do that. It's the only way to allow you to. And it's like, you know, get it in your spirit. It's okay. It's just, this is just literally what we currently got in queue. So, that being said, sorry. That being said, let's go ahead and um, can we get a recommendation? Let's back up. I want to separate these two because they need to stand on their own. So, can we get a rec? Um, what we're asking for is a recommendation from um, the Transportation Committee to allow for the maximum project an increase in the amount of $435,000. $480,000. $480,000. To be sourced out of the uh, capital CTF capital, capital transportation, transportation fund. Okay. So I, that is, I need a second. Second. Gary, okay. any discussion on that? I, I just want to just yeah, what just a comment. Uh, and you know, I balance would be according with the, the number that Mark provided. The, the balance is in it now. Once you subtract that, it's just. What is it, Mark? 91,000 remaining? 480. Say it one more time, Mark. Mm -hmm. Approximately 91,000 yep. would be the balance in the CTA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for the year. Okay. No more. <laughs> okay. All right. So, what was that? 91,000. What the acknowledgement that 91,000 is sort of the current estimated balance of the CTA? Mm -hmm. All right. We got a motion to second. Any more discussion? All right, all in favor of that action, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Everybody opposed? Carries unanimously. Second one on the agenda, White Star. Right. Yes, I, I make a motion that we allocate an additional 135,000 and 16 cents. <laughs> To the project out of the 2016 SPLOS, uh, roadways and sidewalks. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a motion and a second with an exact amount. Is there any further discussion? Do we have a second? I'll, I'll, I'll second. 
Did you say? I did. Okay, second. I did. Okay, two seconds. I did the first and not this one. Oh, not two seconds. All right, so we got a motion by Mr. Um, Director of uh, Valentine. I'm going to let y'all fight this out. Which one do I want to say? Mark, you can say. Mark, you got a second. Second. Okay, all right. Mark has a second. Any further discussion? Yes. How Please. Is, now, once we make this adjustment and approve these dollars, how long? How long will the project start? And that will be waiting a long time. Um, we, as soon as this is approved, uh, we can set up, give them a notice to proceed. So the project's so been advertised, it's ready to go. Yeah, we have to go to the board first. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I have to go to the board first. So right, once, once approved by the board, I can give them notice to proceed, but they're ready to get started. Mark, you know, I'll come to hmm? the next right. meeting. Yeah. August. Yeah, yeah we will get them. Okay. All right. All right, so we got a motion to second. We've got clarity when it needs to come before the Board of Commissions, which is the first meeting of August. Mm -hmm. um, all in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, we have to turn. We, okay, come on. Okay, next item uh, is another uh, supplemental <laughs> agreement request. This one is on the Chattahoochee Trail Project. Yep. We discussed this one a couple of months ago, sure did. and it was uh, deferred to to further discussion. Uh, we are at a juncture on this project uh, that the, uh, the vendor, uh, the designer, consultant, uh, needs guidance and the Georgia Department of Transportation needs to set a schedule for, it, for the project. And so we have to make a decision as to whether we're going to direct them to go ahead and make the change or essentially the project comes to a screeching halt. Uh, to, to, to frame, uh, the, the project is about 11 miles total. There's gonna be in all likelihood delivered in three phases. The environmental report and the concept plan is being developed all as one unit, which typically would be the way you do it based on the, <coughs> the requirements of the uh, federal funds. And, um, the, the change has come about because the alignment of the trail has changed multiple times. Initially, I believe, and this was before my time, but I believe the PATH Foundation had done a preliminary assessment yes. and provided a concept alignment. Uh, the county relied on that concept alignment to procure design services and once they got into the details of the design, they found that they could not adhere to that particular alignment. There's a lot of environmental constraints that they cannot overcome. Yep. And so we went to a different alignment. So that was uh, iteration number two. The, the second alignment uh, did not immediately incur a, a change in uh, the contract amount. However, upon further definition of that second alignment turns out that it has insurmountable environmental concerns. Now we're looking at a third alignment that we believe will not, will get us away from the environmental issue and allow for the process to, to proceed. Yeah. In order to do that, we're looking at an additional 239, about $240,000. That would be my recommendation. We round it up to 240, it's 239,865. Uh, but what this in, uh, entails is actually looking at a, an alignment that goes instead of on the river side of, of the road uh, to uh, the unintended, not on the riverside, riverside, but on the opposite side of the road, uh, go under. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Under 92? No, it gets to 92 <laughs> at some point. No, it goes under Riverside. But, but the, the original alignment trail on the Chattahoochee side of Riverside, now we have to scoot over to the opposite side and follow that to Brockhouse Road and on up to the park. Mm -hmm. uh, so this would be, again, to be able to move that process along. Um, Without this change, we would have to regroup and, and figure out 
<coughs> what we want to do because the project cannot proceed. All right, so where are you pulling the source from? Well, this was uh, the original funding was from the CTF. Yeah. How much, I mean, is there anything left? Yeah. 91,000. Oh, so you said 91 is left. I said, so I'm saying, what was the difference that you needed for this update based on the fact that money had already been allocated? Yeah, 240,000. That's what you needed total. No, in addition. In addition. Uh, in addition to what has already been set yeah, aside. Yeah, there was uh, 325,000 out of the CTF allocated. That has already been taken? Yes. And so now we need another 200, so even double the price. Double the cost yes. to fix the basic yeah. the redesign because they never get you know, what we needed. Perfect. Uh, yeah. I've got this pause now, Chuck. Yeah. I think it's not working with this. Listen. I mean, it's a tough one. It's environmental. I know mm -hmm. that it, it's, it's, it's special. I get I know that the citizens that will work on it. I get it. What about our own in, in the market? Uh, Seek our own environmental study. You know, we use another 240,000. Mm. What if you look at another environmental study? You said you just need a study, right? Well, the, the study is, is part of the original. This is this is to add this level of work on for the new alignment to the study. So it's not a full new study. It's just the, the additional alignment has to be studied. They studied the original and found the constraints. And now we have to look for a different route, and so they would have to analyze yeah, that. So the reason we have to study, and if we go that route, it's going to cost us a lot more money mm -hmm. to construct it because of the environmental concerns. So it'll cost an additional two hundred forty thousand to reroute that, do the same study, which we think will come back positive, and cost us less money in the long run on the new route. Mm -hmm. If not, we're going through wetlands, you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. Is, are we really ready for this? Because I've had, you know, what, what is the total cost? So once we get to this, what's the cost behind this? To the cost of the, oh, the total project? Mm -hmm. uh, the estimated cost is in the neighborhood of um, 15 million. Right. And do we have currently have a source for that? No. That's construction, though. Uh, that's that's my the entire construction. Yeah. construction. Yeah. 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 That's what you mean. The, the expectation is, Commissioner, the, the expectation is uh, this being part of the overall area Chattahoochee Hill tra Country uh, Trail System, mm -hmm. there are components of this being designed in other counties and the expectation is that they would, uh, they would link up. Mm -hmm. So because of that, uh, as we get closer to finalizing the design, we would be making application for right-of-way acquisition funding and construction funding. So we do not have it now, but that's not unusual this early in the game. I'd say that I know we were first up to when we first started that. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Merritt said, okay, help drive this process. You know, took me down to the path foundation. I get it. I'm just not certain. Like, okay, that's a, I get it. It's a quality of life that we want to embrace, but that's like, where are you going to pull it from? So right now, I'm, I'm just, I'm not certain it's a pause. So is there a deadline that drives that we need to make a decision in today's Tuesday, July 23rd meeting? Essentially, I get it. There is no um, not a lot of work that the consultant can continue on without knowing what route it, it, whether they're authorized to study the additional route. Right, but that's the only way we can go anyway, so uh, without the solution. I'd say, well, we just have to have a pause. We we'll pause into the next funding cycle. I'm sure we were talking about five months later. Mm -hmm. And we just, like, if this is a party in the will of the full board of commissioners, I, I'm just not certain that this, I don't want to say that this is the party of commissioners. I know that there's a desire. I know the goal is to take that thing from Box Hall all the way down to the boundary waters, all the way down to the street where they park, all the way back up across the river, all the way up to the other counties. I get it. I think the, the ultimate number was what, 45 million bob, uh, bill. It was the, the conservation, whatever that broader we get, that big thing. It was like 45 million. And I'm like, mm -hmm. right now. So, no. but let, let me offer this yeah. This This project has about 1.7 million in federal funds, 
too high. Uh -huh. I, uh, I'm sorry, 1.3 uh, in federal funds right now. Uh -huh. If if we do not move forward at some point, I'm not suggesting that right away, but at some point we stand to lose the, to lose the same yeah. money. But, but what we can do everything. So as much as I appreciate, you know, we're setting things in motion, we get these grants, and we just sometimes we just hope that well we'll have the, the, the match when it comes along. You know, you know, yes, you guys have done a good job of moving things along, but we, we, we can't we can't force this. And if we do, we have to prioritize. And that's my only reason with this one. Like, all right, let's let's just make sure that we're all in the same room. These are the type of decisions that are made in group meetings at budget retreats or at mid-year retreats. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, where there's a collective voice. Right. And on something like this, because I'm not quite, even though it impacts a lot of us, I wouldn't want to make that decision alone in here, Madam Chair. Not only this one, but yeah. you know, it's about the compromise and stuff that. Yeah, it and if I have to make a decision um, between safety and recreation, it's definitely going to be safety. These first two projects are related to safety. Maxim Road is so um, detriment to our citizens because of the And then Whitestone, got to get across the bridge. But the others, recreation, I just don't have. I don't think we're right now. We tapped out in that just the now. If we could just hold it to what's, give us a timeline. Tell us when you have to have an answer. I can't give you anything definitive, but they have, uh, GDOT has been awaiting um, resetting the schedule on this based on our decision. Right. So, so but didn't we, but okay, but we did just put money in to get into the current design that they, has now not been successful. Now we gotta go. So it ain't like we just sort of have been pausing for four, five years. In essence, we did put money in to get into the current state. Now it needs to be redesigned or whatever, I don't mm -hmm. care. Sure. So, I mean, I don't think that you know, give us a couple of months to, you know, re refresh. Yeah, so, I, I, would think, the year. I would think, I would think, I would think a few months would, would not be an issue, but the point that I was making is at some point they're going to say you need to make a decision. Yeah. 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 But yeah. If, it ain't, if it ain't tomorrow, if it ain't at this moment, I'm sure I, I, just, yeah. I said no movement on this. I yeah. won't call the question on this. Because we definitely made a concerted effort, put the money out there, and then of course just we didn't make our free throws. So uh, then we can. Okay. No action. No action. All right, we go. But keep it on the list. No action. Okay. Right, people, come on, guys. We're almost done. Okay. okay. Next item on the agenda is the uh, on-call consulting services contracts. We've been talking about this for a while. We have uh, reached out and uh, let Mr. Peacock give us Is that why you were here all this time, Bill? It is. The last, the the last, the last, the the last two were mine as okay. well. Okay. All right, come we on. We sent out the original uh, RFQ in March of this year. Yeah. We got phase one. Uh, proposals back in from a large set of companies. Uh, based on that, those proposals, Miguel and his staff uh, chose those that he thought would could best fulfill uh, portions of the 13 task areas that were included in scope one, in, in phase one. Uh, in, then we sent out a request for phase two proposals we received those back on June 21st. Again, it, it was a smaller subset of the larger subset. Uh, uh, and now Miguel has a, a recommendation based on phase two proposals as to who should actually be awarded the on-call contracts. Okay. And I'll let him share that with you. Okay. Uh, as Bill mentioned, there, there's a number of components and what I tried to do uh, is to position us, rather than have to go out every single time with individual RFPs, RFQs, to uh, engage, uh, I think it's a total of 11 companies, mm -hmm. uh, firms, put them, uh, enter into a standby contract with them, uh, and there will be no, no dollar value assigned to that contract, it's just on demand at the discretion of the county. Whenever we have work that needs to be done, we would go back out to those companies that have been qualified under the service area, a particular service area for the scope that we're looking for, and negotiate a, a price for a scope of services for a project. We have 
the State Route 92 at uh, Anawaki and Riverside. We have the State Route 5 at Boulevard northbound. We have a number of projects. We have the sidewalk projects, and a project connecting the Maxima Road project to Cobb County, a sidewalk. We have a number, I think it's about five or six, uh, task orders that we would issue once these contracts are approved. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking for is a, uh, now that we've concluded the process, a recommendation from the committee to, to the full board to enter into standby on-demand services uh, contracts, consulting contracts, for Michael Baker, Southeaster Engineering Incorporated, Lowe, Pond Company, Neil Schaefer, BM and K, THC, Croy, H and L, GCA and Maldino and Wilbur, and each of those contracts would be uh, specific to the firm, specific to the service area that they've been pre-qualified under in order to be in conformance with the federal requirements. The federal requirements require that they be pre-qualified devoid of the cost component. And once that is in place, then we can negotiate with them uh, by way of a task force. So, and you, and you, and you, this is important, I'll follow this. So, all right, so, I, well, first of all, hopefully you have uh, some type of matrix or grid to see how these were evaluated to come up with these numbers. Because to present you know, almost 13 contracts um, verbally, to look for recommendation that we need that information, that, mm -hmm. that courtesy needs to be filed. Um, secondly, um, when we originally, Mark, this is, this is part of you, when we originally started um, doing these, it's only been done one time with prior director of transportation presenting uh, a, a, a set of contracts. Uh, for just this effort, but it, it was standby. Uh, we didn't really use them, but it, we, we got the spirit behind. And the goal was to, uh, the purpose of giving them standby was just in the case that we needed some preliminary design work. In other words, we, every now and then we need we just like, can you scope this for us? We don't know what the order of magnitude is. And that conversation like yesterday is like, okay, so having these guys on standby, you have a little small amount, and you help us the preliminary scope for us to even talk about what we're about to enter into. That's what the preliminary design. Yeah. Now, I want to make sure that I understand what you're saying, because what I thought I heard you say was, well, we award these guys, and then we have to turn around and we immediately get to go ahead and negotiate with these guys. And I'm like, oh no. I, I think it, it takes away uh, visibility, a transparency. Like, no, I don't want design to ever get away from us. From the board of commissioners by awarding these contracts you sign on sign you get to negotiate it's like oh well, i want to see it more and, and so that's what that's the, I'm, I'm not comfortable with if i heard you say this is for the, for the you're going to go into direct design preliminary design just give us an order back to i'm great but the intent was to set aside 13 contracts out the gate for pure design and, and we haven't gotten anything right here at this moment that like no tabulations no nothing I, I think we, I, I can uh, Commissioner, I, I can address the tabulation. We went through a very detailed matrix on, on the selection process. We can provide you that. Now, when I say we can move from, once we get the contracts uh, approved, move to negotiation, we, will, we have a scope of services for the next elements of work that we need. That, that has been what we've been talking about for several months now at uh, various uh, forums, uh, board meetings and the like. The intent is once we have these contracts in place, we negotiate with them a scope of services for design of a project. We issue a task order. We issue a task order. That is negotiated and brought back before the BOC yeah. to See, approve their task force. I'm just hearing what you said at the table. Because what you just said was like, well, when are we get visibility? You, you, you basically come, you, you get where I'm, I'm, I'm I, I need to come back to the do. BOC for approval. Nothing, not a dollar is paid or a dollar is contracted with 
until the BOC approves. It just speeds the process of uh, going see. through all these. Speed is part. fine, but I need visibility. I need to be clear on what what, you just, what, what empowerment <clears throat> you just asked for. Yeah. I was like, what now? 13 straight contracts just like that? When I get, but how it was being framed was about preliminary design. Right, that's what we're here to develop the precedent. Like, okay, I know that's what um, um, one of my colleagues was asking me about. Like, and so I'm hearing you. We're hearing each other, but we're we're, we're sort of not. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking preliminary design. I'm thinking about um, whatever, good head, and all that. Like, no, no. You know, we had to stand by guy that was like, no. I hear what you're saying, what you might even talk about, but our understanding was like, it's to stand by guy and do preliminary designs, come in and help us get through the moment. I say we clarified that. Well, no, it's not preliminary. I understand. It's well, it's full design work I on these projects. I okay, I'm saying, but we're making a decision, so it's where we were. Okay. All right, right. It's where we are, um, and that we're thinking it was preliminary design. So now you're moving to full throttle design. All right. Um, and I haven't seen. We haven't seen the tabulation. Um, I, I can provide you the tabulation, but the, the end result would be these recommendations. Here. Okay, but you got you, you're gonna have to humor me a little bit. Sure. They just can't override the fact that no, you're not listening. Like you can't shotgun 13 contracts through a board just like that. Like, see, you were saying it's like well, it doesn't matter. It's just like no, 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 like come on now. It's 13 contracts. Yeah, I, I wouldn't make a recommendation out of this committee straight. Like no, I'm not gonna cover this out of committee. I'm gonna go to the full board commissioners and let them look at these 13 contracts. No, no. I mean, I get it. I, I just say let it pass through with no recommendation. Just like, okay, we'll put it before the board commission and let them see the full tabulation. Because like, no, just for your your comment right there was like, well, it's gonna be like, oh, okay. That that's like it, the courtesy has to go both ways. And it, it's just that slight like, wow, really? It was important for me to get like, I mean. Like, I'm telling you where we are, and it, it was like, it's just going to override. Like, no, no, come on now, work with us. But then it didn't want to work with us. It pretty much said, well, it's going to be the same regardless. And, and so we've gone through this effort. Well, I'll get this tabulation to you. It's like, oh, no. So based on that, I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I, I know how to like, let this go. Um, I, 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 I suggest, Madam Chair, that there's really no action taken and just allow it to go straight to the Board of Commissioners as is. I would encourage the county administrator to make sure that the full board of commissioners has access to the full tabulation and how this process went. Um, just, just because again, I want to be behind this and sponsor it as the chair to better get an understanding. But to tell me that well, it's going to be the same and the speed was like, okay, well, I'm going to get out of the way on that. Because it, it's that type of, we're trying to work with them. But it, it, it's not a rough stamp. And so I had to get comfortable like, no, you shot that in 13. 13 contracts? Like what now? No, I, I'm faster than that. Like, okay, so now you're going to make me have to go dig, dig deeper. If you would have got my body and got me to be a stakeholder in this, to sort of be the whole point of having a chairmanship and having a committee, which we can do it, that's great. But the fact that you're going to award 13 contracts on all this body of work with no visibility, it's just some words across the table. And, and it, it's like, that's what I'm like, wow. And it's like, and I'm, I'm recording this and saying it in such a way like, this is live. And so that's where we have to be to check and balance this is, okay, now we're going to have to go deeper. Because they didn't want to acknowledge the fact that I just wanted to know. I just want to see something. I want to validate that, okay, it's all, everything's good. I, my, I have, my spirit is at peace. But now I don't have peace because it, it pretty much like invalidated the fact that I even asked. And, and we did this live. It was like, okay, well, we're going to see how this plays out. So. I, again, I have no action to take on this now, Chair. I said, let it go for the full board of commissioners. Mark, you have full authority to bring it, put on you guys' agenda. I would just highly encourage you to have your paperwork behind you um, to bring this forward. And this could have been cleaner uh, in that you would have had a whole package if you would have honored this process. But now you're going to make these commissioners go in here like, okay, let's look at each one of these. And like, okay, who is this group? Who is this group? Okay, how is that group go down? That, that's, that's the difference between the two actions you just have to like. And so I, I can't call a question, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm going to allow this to stand as is. Um, no action is necessary taken with Mark. You have full authority to I, bring before the full board. I, I have a comment. Yeah, please, Madam Chair. Uh, 
Maybe I'll have you consider it instead of, what did you say you had 11? How many? 14? I think it's 11. 11, yeah. I'll okay. so. uh, have to consider three I've heard of, a primary, secondary, and we just say backup to the backup. Three, three vendors I've had in the past for on call consulting. That's just how okay, we use three. Why you got to have 11? Well, so be, because there's. Are they certain specific the different categories? Different, the different categories. categories. Oh, yeah. so so we, we present it from a category. There are 13 categories. Yeah, 13. 13. And one person wins. Oh, 13 categories. All 13 categories. Oh. 13 categories, so right. one person. So it isn't, it isn't yeah. just designed, there could be surveying. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's one per category. Right. Well, it could be more than one per category. It's, it's always good to have at least a backup. So there could be two or three per category because the firm is capable of doing, doing different things. Yeah. Yeah. But we got one prime, basically. The one prime and one in the case They come back and say, look, we can't get to it for eight months, and you know, we need it now. We need or, if, number two. or if when we start talking about how much it's going to cost, yeah. they're exorbitant. Yes. Then we go, we've got somebody yeah. else with double check. I, I just need to understand. Yeah. I'm okay. I, I get it. Yeah. Double check. Okay. I, I get it. I get the civility. I get all the right. I, I'm fine with that. I went through this before. Again, a little bit more enhanced, a little bit more deliberate, a little bit more straight. But again, let it come to I mean, Even to that point, even if your own chair was like, okay, so what are we doing here? And kick, 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 kick. I know exactly what, like, that's what I'm saying. Um, Madam Chair, let, let it be. Let, let, let it be. They've done their work. Um, I say let it come before it. Um, the full board of commissions and let them render. Yeah, um, right. Mark, you got your action item? Yes, sir, on the agenda. Full board of commissions, and again, I encourage you to make sure they got the details behind us. We always do. We will. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's keep going. All right, that's that on that. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda are on demand uh, striping contracts, and uh, I will have our transportation uh, engineer come up and provide some detail. But Bill, if you would. I'll start it off. Okay. We issued an invitation to bid in on May the 14th yep. for, and I call it pavement marking. It's yep. uh, striping, you know, putting paint on yep. the roadways, whatever term you want to use. Yep. Paint. <laughs> and and uh, we received three uh, bids in. Uh, ranging from a low of $15,389.50 to a high of $43,011.46. And this is the painting that would be done on county roads paved by uh, county facilities. County forces. County forces. Uh, and because it's not, it's not part of the LMIG or the other large paving projects, it could be. Uh, th there are situations where we may get a grant from GDOT, such as is the case mm -hmm. now, then we would contract out uh, one of those three firms. Well, my, my understanding was that when we award a contract for paving to like a C.W. Matthews to pave large sections of road, mm -hmm. part of that contract includes pavement marking. Yes. So those we don't, this is not, does not involve that. any of that. No. But this is mainly the roads that the county self paves that we're going to come back in and put the paving or, on. Or roads that we're not paving right now, but the striping needs to be refreshed. Okay, okay. But they're county roads that we're responsible for. Correct. So, okay. So for Interstate um, West Parkway, right by Walmart, right by the Hilton, we have repaved um, accordingly. And the stripes are not out there, and they're still not out there, but I'm assuming that this would be the contract to go out there and finish the permanent striping. Is that correct? That is correct. One of these contractors, once we have the standby contract in place, we would reach out to them and, and give them a, a number of roads to strike and get across. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, Bruce Mercer, uh, our transportation engineer. Mm -hmm. and Bruce, welcome. Thank you. He's, uh, he's going to run us through All right, what's he got for us? different contractors. That's fine. Okay. Um, the three contractors that we're um, considering are Highway Services um, here in Douglasville, mm -hmm. uh, Pete Pavement Markings out of Columbus, who is, is really well known in the southeast, and Roadside Specialties out of Blackshear. Mm -hmm. So um, 
each of those have um, bid and provided their, are willing to provide their services. Um, I will say um, something to back up just a little bit when we talked about the dollar value. Let's not get misled by the dollar value that was mentioned because there were some of these companies that did not bid. So that it skews the based dollar on unit prices and then they combined all the unit prices to come up with the total. But it is based on a set of unit is, prices. But, but when, when one of the companies do not bid, then it makes it look like their services or their value is, is a better Cheaper. price. Right. It's really not. They just don't offer the service. Yeah. So we did have um, some of the vendors that did not cover every item, therefore, to make sure that we cover ourselves with a proper vendor is why we would like to, to advance forward with multiple vendor awards and to assure that we can meet schedules as needed as we're talking about um, a, a, a recently resurfaced road. Mm -hmm. So these guys all compliant with transportation, GDOT, um, I mean, or do, how are you, like do they conform consistently across the board as far as the contract is concerned? Like for example, somebody who does our, lays out asphalt, it has, it has to be a certain standard, or a certain requirement. Uh, are strikers the same way, or are, are they, is a lesser standard in how we select it? They are the same. They have to be GDOT approved and certified. And so they are qualified. GDOT certified. These, these yes, three that you're making each each of the three. Okay, yeah, you said you would put us on notice. You put us on notice earlier that you were a lot, a lot to be happy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Have we looked at each district? Uh, will you have these streets uh, listed by districts, or how are you going to address this market? Sounds like it's going to be a nice, big job. Is it going to be a huge, pretty, relatively huge job? Yeah, Since well, we have three vendors, it sounds like you're looking by districts, or you're working by districts. Well, we, we could. However, um, I believe it was earlier this year, sometime around March, I'm researching. Uh, we uh, came before the, the committee and indicated that we were going to be applying for a grant right. for GDO. Mm -hmm. We received that grant, and so these these contracts are to stand by ready. Once we get the grant, then we will be able to issue task orders to the various contractors. who are all GDO for the file. Uh, the initial list was essentially composed uh, between us and, and GDOT, they came and looked at the preliminary li list that we put together and made the decision as to which roads they would um, they would fund. Mm -hmm. So there are roads in various districts, but it wasn't um, split necessarily by district. And they had to be GDOT approved. To get they had to be GDOT. GDA approved, but okay. in the future, though, if we have funding to to have our own county-led uh, effort, then we can do it that way. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other discussion? All right. So, total amount. There is no amount on these yeah. contracts. No, no, no. Oh, these are standby contracts. I understood that there was an estimate. Well, the, there is a grant from GDOT that will follow this. Yeah. It'll come back to the board, but that is about uh, 300. 300. Yeah, that's right. Well, these are my match. They're a match. Yes, there is a local match. I just want to say for the record, so there's out of this $343,000 grant, there's a match, an exact amount, and we have a source for it to fulfill the current 2019 striping. Right, let's make sure we're very clear on we're not obligating ourselves if there's something with the award of this and, and because the, um, I, I don't have a clear recollection as to whether we made a recommendation the first time we came before the committee uh, mm -hmm. we need to know that okay. Mark do you I mean in would essence you be in the CTF um, listen no I don't see it in the CTF so, again, one more time. So, our operations, we, we can do it ourselves in house. I get it. That means you need equipment, you need people, you need uh, obviously what you need, materials. Uh, no problem. 
So you, this is one where we're gonna outsource it, the same function. We need to be able to do this in the house, but we're gonna outsource this function. No problem. Um, but did we budget for this? It sounds like we didn't budget. No, it was not originally budgeted because it wasn't grant. Uh, okay. But it's still a match. I mean, okay, all right, sure. so you got a grant now, so you're able to do a little bit more with this you know, grant. Okay, so stay with me. I need to know the ass, though. I, you know, I'm not going to enter into a, I can't support a contract that doesn't have a direct budget amount or that just going to be an obligation. Well, when the award does not mature, they're going to be expecting that, okay, this $300 worth of money, so what is the board's commitment? I'm like, when you're down to 91 over there, what you need? 43, 120, anything over 91, you're out of money there. I, I need y'all to be clear, clear. Do you know what, what's the match? Uh, 90,000. 90, <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't. It gives me. I mean, yes, there is, but that's this could be considered a safety component because yeah. the risk of strapping exists. Risk of strapping, but that's technically that's not part. Of, well, that's we can discuss that's, that, but that's not yeah, what that's LMIG. That's, that's not what's house. on the agenda. That's, yeah, but now that part does need to be discussed. Street lights coming up. Mm -hmm. um, I'll add two more roads and I'll be bringing that to y'all. Those prices are relatively um, small mm -hmm. except for one road, and one road equals about it's more than the rest of them put together. So, Highway 166 is like $347,000. You add that plus two traffic signals, if you estimate 200 apiece. Um, seven, eight, nine, you've almost used up the million. <coughs> in the safety, come on, in the safety, that one million dollar safety category. And, and, and again, component. the stripes were important for those roles that are don't need to be resurfaced for the, our seniors who said, can we get some stripes or some reflections or just, that's all we need on certain roles. So, I mean, I, I could support the safety, that's what you want to pull it from, but I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. We're in play. Uh, it was a grant that we didn't have. You're able to do more work. I'm fine. So my call. We're going to put it on. Right, right there. It just depends on what the route we go with those with the street lights. Um, <laughs> yeah. If y'all want to go with all of them, we'll do it. Yeah. 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 There is a lighting project at the roundabout, but not on the rest of 166. The problem is there's just not any poles. So it costs $40,000 a mile to do essentially what they did on their side. Mm -hmm. On 166? Mm -hmm. Can you just make it not clear to me? I know that was my request on 166. Can you cut it in half? We cut it in half? Yes, wrinkle some just. Yeah, but I'd have to get a revised price. I still have to run power. Okay. okay. So, just be less posed. Okay. Yes, you can do that. So you said that the quote now is what, three? Three what? Um, hold on, I'll pull it up. We're going to get the 250,000. That's why we have committed to work. $640,000 approximately. So six forty dollars for the lights. Um, so six forty dollars for the lights. How much do you think our portion for two traffic signals would be on Highway 92? I mean, uh, Let me, I mean, 
I would say oh, she got the chips in two and a half million. Hundred. You're looking at another, yeah, no, no. another two hundred. Yeah. So that's four hundred the millions millions gone. So one sixty six alone is three hundred eighty six thousand three hundred and sixty three dollars. You said it's one, how much? much more? 386,000. Yeah, and this the total is 630, so it's more, it's more than everything else put together. Right, that's what I'm saying, so this, see what I can get for, I feel like we have, <laughs> see what we can get for 250, 250,000. Okay. And then they'll give us the 90,000 for this part. Okay. The striping, the seniors want stripes. I need some lights for the teenagers driving on um, the 166 from the Yeah, I'm sure that was it. So we're trying. Okay. We need economic development for um, Riverside Light. Um, again, that, that impacts the city. They're holding off on certain um, um, housing considerations. So we could actually pull that from there. I'm just saying to give you a little bit of that. I call that name. I can take subtraction that name. I can't hear you. Whisper. You whisper. You whisper. I said, subtract the, the, the 90 for the 3. It's going to be the 296 for 90. See if they can get the 296. I'm not a little buffer. Mm -hmm. Those are other estimates. Oh, they are? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can always change it later on. Okay. I'll, what if I start with 250 and then more? Okay, 250. All right, so one more time. This, this, this what's on the table um, is toward these, these three contracts, or yeah, three contracts, uh, to do the current, is this the 2018 or the 2019 striping, or is it just stuff that has accumulated to, to this point? Mm -hmm. just stuff that has accumulated to this point, essentially. Okay. So then, you, you, but because it's a grant requires the master, we have to do that before right. it's so hard, right, so we, we can't cut it back, it's just the master's and match. Right. All right, all right, so. The exact amount that you're asking for the obligation, can you just clarify out one more time? Do we need to be able to say it? Nine raise thousand. Nine. That's a match. Mm -hmm. Don't match. Okay. And y'all don't want to take this purely out of mm -hmm. the CTF mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. And leave one thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. No. I think we'd be fine. I'm, I'm willing to compromise on my lights on 166. <coughs> and if it was the other commissioners that had requested, like the other district commission, I would just leave them alone. But that's one of my requests. I'm willing to scale back a little bit, but at least still have some lighting plus some stripes. Yeah, so come back there, man. Just, just yeah, keep so, it, just so we, you we get, get some. Want. Okay. You so I want the best of both worlds because the seniors are complaining about not being able to see in the rain. Okay. Yeah. Will you put the painted markers down too so they can see? Yes. This is really all right. This is Spiking, right. markers, all that, right? Okay. Yes. Reflect or whatever they're called. Reflectors. Correct. Reflectors. Okay. Can we get I'm sorry to go back here. Can we get a motion for this? So I'm assuming we're combining the motion. So I'll make a motion and y'all let me know if y'all want me to change it. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we um, award on call striping with the companies that Miguel stated. Miguel feels state those. Uh, Highway I'll Services say, Incorporated, mm -hmm. Pavement Marking, yeah. and Roadside Specials. And specialties. Uh, recommend that the the ninety thousand dollar match come from the one million dollars uh, safety category from the spots for the grant we receive. Well, that we're waiting to receive from Georgia DOT. Okay, may I clarify? Mm -hmm. Okay, the the contracts these standby contracts have zero value initially. Yes. And they will be able will be able to use them for that project and other projects. I don't want that to right, so you need two motions. We need two motions. Let's, okay. let's see the contract first. So I make a motion that we award standby pavement marking contracts to the three companies, Highway Services Incorporated, Peak Pavement Markings LLC, and Roadside Specialist LLC. And that's a recommendation to the board. Recommendation to the board. Second. All right. We got a motion in the second as a point of clarity. What is the term of this contract? It would be 12 months. It is 12 months. So that's our standard. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't need to edit it. That's fine. I'm always here. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, it's, 
So it's one year for the entire work. Okay, so then we would come back around next year again and go through this whole process again, right? Mm -hmm. or, re or we could or renew. Re yeah, it was renewals. bid with potential renewals. Okay. <coughs> yes, it was. Okay, all right. So we got motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of the award of these three contracts as presented, please raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Yes. Motion carries five. Congratulations on that one. Now let's get the amount. Right. So now we need the second one. Make a motion that we pay the ninety thousand dollar match out of the G dot safety grant um, out of the safety money that was allocated in the splash, which was a total of one million dollars. Second. We got a civil move and we got a second. All right, mm -hmm. so to clarify, the grant is how much, Miguel, one more time? Just for the record. The, to the total amount is 300000 mm -hmm. Federal funding is 210 yep. and a 90000 local. There we go. 210 federal grant, $90,000 local, $300,000. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. That money, our match is going to come out of our safety, uh, mm -hmm. um, safety source out of the spots. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Give me a pose. Motion carries. All right. Go get it. Mm -hmm. Miguel, anything else? Yes, sir. We still have a couple of more items I'm to go. I'll make it because. Okay. Um, Next item on the agenda is the uh, DOT maintenance facility uh, architectural services for the contract renovation and restoration. Bill? This is the facility over on Chicago Avenue that burnt. Yep. So we sent out a uh, request for proposals on May 14th yep. mm -hmm. for the architectural and engineering services for this reconstruction. Yep. We received one proposal back. And again, I'm going to caveat this by saying I think because of the size, because it's not a large project, it's a fairly small project. Right. A lot of the larger firms just weren't, in, weren't interested in it. Right. So the firm that did submit a proposal was Carter Watkins, that has done much other work here in Douglas County. And so that's the only proposal we had, and it was found to be acceptable. So Miguel is going to ask the committee to recommend that we award the contract for architectural and engineering services for this reconstruction and renovation project to Carter Watkins. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to speed it along here. I got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, um, Mark, any comments on this? If you, we, we should move forward on this. And if you just got a single responder, um, and it was. Uh, no, I'm good. They do a good job, and they're, they're cheap. Okay. Most yeah. companies cheap. charge yeah. anywhere from 10 to 15%. Yeah. 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 Carter Watkins charges five. Five to six percent. All right, and so how are we doing this rebuild? Is this part of insurance money? I mean, yes, yes, and it fits within our budget. It's within. It's within. All right. okay. What's the total now? Seventy-five thousand. Seventy-five thousand. Right. Was the max to, to rebuild it? Oh, this is that's the, that's, that's just architectural design. Yeah, uh, seventy-five thousand for the design. So yes. And that's what this contract is for. Mm -hmm. right. Just for design. Just for design. All right. And then how much is the bill mm -hmm. you, you, to you, the construction? We won't know that until so they get it to the design. design. But then we do have what a nine what was the total amount of the I'm trying to get this on record. I, I, we need to leave, leave breadcrumbs along the way so that people know how we got what we got. So what was the what was the total amount of the insurance that we got? Or you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't yes. know it. Yes. Yes. It's different, but for this, it was, and we're still working to get more money because Fine. of this mark. There's, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think three million. We, I, we will I define know. that and come back before the committee and the board as as we proceed in the process. Uh, the The initial goal is to go uh, for for the architect to go in, do an analysis, a preliminary mm -hmm. analysis, come back with findings and recommendations, and we'll present those to you. And then there will be uh, design components that will be defined, and we will bring those back to you. And in terms of uh, recommendations as to uh, the reconstruction components, what materials, uh, what extent, all of that will be discussed as we progress. 
Yeah, I, I, again, stay with me. Seventy-five thousand dollars for this, right? You just said seventy-five thousand, and it's only a, um, a seven hundred thousand dollar reconstruction, right? So this is ten percent of that. I, you know, I'm, I'm asking for order of magnitude that, in my mind, or the public's mind, this is acceptable, right? It's acceptable in comparison to what? Relative to what? And so that's all I'm asking, that, that I, I need the numbers to, to, to sort of just for the record, I mean, the atmosphere says, okay, this, this does sound reasonable at $75,000 for a design um, to, to rebuild a building that got burned. I want to quantify, like, okay, well, how much insurance money we got. Because again, if we obligate ourselves down a path, we find ourselves as commissioners having to find money for, like, for, for these things. Like, well, I need to know what it is. Because, like, we do we rebuild it, or do we? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is like the committee should do the work, the hard work, which is like, okay, but what's the total amount? Don't piecemeal me through this process. Like, what is the total amount? What's the insurance money? I think that it's not unreasonable to ask for that amount. That, that's all I'm saying is that, okay, guys. Because then, if I don't get that here, then now, okay, now I'm going to go to the full board. Like, guys, I don't know about these guys. These guys, like, no, I, I'm not building this. Now, y'all vote your conscience, but I didn't get out of that information. Now, I wasn't going to stop the show, but, you know, I, I, you can either do it now or do it later. And so I, I'm saying we need that information. So for the sake of this conversation, we've got one out of time. And I've, I think this meeting has, we've, we've sufficiently um, uh, fed the appetite of transportation, but um, we need information on this. So can we, Mark, at the county district, can we ensure that we have this information um, that we get through this process that we need how much it costs, insurance. I know we're working good, but we, we, we've said it before. But it's announced. Um, you know, okay. That, that's all we asked. Um, all right. So, that being said, um, uh, I think we keep it from my chair. You had some assets that were um, obviously destroyed due to this fire. I mean, obviously, we need some housing issues. I don't know where the current people are being housed in another building. We need to regain access to this asset. Um, mm -hmm. They sufficiently say it needs to be rebuilt. Um, I, just to make my decision, I would need that information. But I'll, I'll pass it on to the full board commission. So um, I'm not as. Um, opposed to this like the prior one. So can I get a recommendation to send this forward to the full board commissioners? So moved. Second. Any further discussion, Mr. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Keep it forward. Aye. Aye. One more item. Yeah, the last item on the agenda is a, a discussion and this will be brief. Uh, there's there's been some concern raised about uh, Tyree Road in particular, having uh, a number of trucks uh, cutting through it that shouldn't. Yep. And there's been a request for a establishing a no trucks route. Okay. That process, as much as it's not very complex, is convoluted. Okay. It, it requires a public hearing. So the, essentially, the re I would need a recommendation from the committee to move it to, to the board. Uh, the next step would be a request from the board uh, for a public hearing to be set to accomplish this. Um, can I get a, a motion? So moved. Second. All right, any further discussion on this? All right, so um, we have a motion to move this to the full board of commissioners um, for consideration so no truck zone on Tyree Road um, in order to go into a public hearing um, schedule. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Thank you. Anything else needs to come before this committee? Right, this 